What's up, duelists? Your boy's back with RBET top eight, um, which is tight. I think that that's that's awesome, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What's up, guys? We've got the no. This isn't actually top eight yet. This is round eight. Uh, we had to cut yesterday a little bit short due to challenge crashing. We manually did the brackets, and we are going to be watching. Um, Top eight match between Raunuk and or not sorry, this is not a top eight match. This is a round eight match between Raunuk and Oddity. Or should we watch a win in it? Oh my gosh. Alright. Oh ooh, this is the wrong thing. This is the pairings. Raunuk and Oddity are already guaranteed top eight. Um and I think I think some of the other guys. I want to watch Galaxia versus GBO. I think that's the match I want to watch. All right, we're going to watch Galaxia versus... Sorry, I am I was up late fixing the bracket, and I didn't sleep well, but you know what? We're watching the game, and we've got Galaxia round eight. So the winner of this guaranteed gets top eight, which is sick. That's everything you ever want. Galaxia versus GBO. Now, shout out to both these players. They're both incredibly awesome. Welcome in, everybody. I'm just going to share the live stream on social media real quick, and then we will be good to go for top eight, which is exciting. Um, it appears that they are starting in a few moments, just to make sure the judges have a clean cut for time in the round. Um, I'm just going to post that we are live with top eight. And live with RBT top eight. Or, I guess round eight. Round eight, then top cut come through. And then reply. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for being a legend and doing these events for the community. Yeah, no problem. Thanks the thank the mods, man. They they put in so much effort. Uh they they really make this happen. They really do make the they really do be making this happen. So uh, how's your guys' morning going? I'm I'm exhausted. <laughs> Today's your birthday, Brandon. Oh, happy birthday, Brandon. That's awesome. We're the same age. That's cool. I hope you're having a good day. This is your birthday present. You get RBET round eight and then top eight. Happy birthday, Brandon. <laughs> excited to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Me too. I'm also excited to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Which decks are in top 8? We don't, ne we don't know quite yet. But based off of this, so if we look at this, that's not it. If we look at this, uh, Raunuk and Oddity were the only undefeated going into round 8. So they're both guaranteed top 8. Um, and then the X1s are all bracket two three four five and six so the winner of all of these is going to make top eight as well so that leaves one slot for the top cut player with the worst tiebreakers um or sorry best tiebreakers <laughs> i can't speak i'm so tired guys i'm so sorry oh my gosh okay i need to i'm gonna wake up wake up we got a match we got a match all right galaxia xd versus gbo we don't know what gbo is playing we know what Galaxia is playing. Galaxia is playing Valhalla Fairies at X and One, and GBO is playing something at X and One. We recently watched, we recently watched um, GBO go on a run with Flamvel, so it could be something similar to that. We don't really know. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, okay, here's Shining Angel. This is kind of part of the course. There's a deep prison on the Shining Angel, so. Doesn't want to deal with Shining Angel, so the set monster he wanted to protect from Shining Angel. Interesting choice, but I respect it. Looks like there's a Blackwing value on GBO side of the field, so um, some sort of Blackwing deck possibly. D Prison set value could potentially mean Blackwings, or it could potentially mean Value Turbo. We don't know. It could also mean like Norlaris, which. Um, we haven't seen any of in this tournament that thus far and it could also be monster mash which wouldn't really make sense with the deep prison 
Okay, Honest Swing is pretty solid here. If there's a Kalut though, it's gonna trade with the Honest, which usually you want your Honest to beat the Kalut. Okay, Icarus Attack usually means Black Wings. Usually, but it can mean, um, it can mean uh, Vayu Turbo. So Hecatree is gonna be activated, uh, main phase two, and then Valhalla is gonna be activated to special summon out Tethius, Goddess of Light, and a Legacy of Yadagratsu. Are we gonna see a full Tethius combo? We are. This is the first time we're seeing a Tethius combo live on stream, I believe, in an RBET ever. It's going to resolve twice, three times. Oh my gosh, what a way to kick off round eight here at RBET. He's going to draw one final card, and that's going to be that. But, I mean, man just flipped a Legacy of Yotta Grosso and drew five cards. That's insane. That is crazy. Oh my gosh. We aren't even in top 8 yet. Yaros is, in fact, a fairy. Here comes Soul of Purity and Light. Now, Soul of Purity and Light does have a nice static effect here. It will defend from attacks. That is... That was a very good... That was a very good turn for uh, Galaxia. Now, GBO, he has to crack back here. He has to deal with this Tethius somehow. Because if he doesn't deal with the Tethius, it's very likely he could just draw him up a whole bunch of new cards. But he has to put up a monster that's at least 2,700 to get over the Tethius. And that's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, one Kalut, one monster can get there. Um, but Gale doesn't quite get there. Uh, Soul of Purity and Light is going to protect Tethius from that Gale attack because Gale is only going to be 1,000 during the battle phase. So, um, very interesting moment. Now, there is there is some consideration to not even summoning the Sopal so on um, Galaxia's turn because... You know, you want your Valhalla to be live next turn, but I mean, I think it's still fine. I think just getting two big monsters into play versus Black Wings is is pretty difficult for them to deal with. He has no level fours in the graveyard, so Blizzard is not not a comeback play here. He would need something like Blizzard Bora. Let's see if he has that. He does have Blizzard no effect. Yes, here's Bora. He doesn't want to play into um, Herald of Orange Light. That being said, Herald of Orange Light would have had to be one of the last cards. Bryonic is not the card I expected. Here, this is probably some sort of Dark Arm Dragon play. Yep, there's Dark Arm Dragon. This makes sense. So let's see, is the strength of Dark Arm Dragon going to be enough here to deal with these monsters? One thing Galaxia could have done... Oh, he does have Herald of Orange. Oh my god, that is... That is disgusting. That is simply disgusting. Now this Bryonic can pitch the last two cards to bounce these two monsters, but that's getting you nowhere fast. Uh, Bryonic can't even attack over Soul of Purity and Light. It trades because of that static effect. So that was a massive Herald of Orange Light from Galaxia. Um, absolutely, absolutely disgusting. That must have been his last card in hand. Otherwise, he probably would have revealed it to Tethius to draw more. So the last unknown was Herald of Orange Light there. Crazy turn. He used the Honest to bait the back row, and then he was able to Valhalla out the Tethius in main phase two and get the full combo going. And next turn we get a plus, possible plus X. Yes, if he doesn't bounce the Tethius right now, um, then yeah, next turn he's staring down the infinite card advantage. That is crazy. Um, this is why I think Herald of Orange Light is one of the best cards in the format, because you can't play around it. You must simply play through it. And that's it. You have to play through it. And that's it. There's nothing There's nothing to it. There's nothing around it. Okay, he has to Bryonic, pitch Sirocco. That's going to be able to bounce the Tethius. That will activate his value. I mean, he had a very good hand here. GBO had all the comeback plays he needed. He's going to crash the Sopal. Both of them are going to die. But now he just specials a monster again. Crashing with the Sopal there is not... It's not ideal. I mean, having the value down is good, but... I mean, this could mean... Huge damage at the very least. And you have one card to your... Well, I guess two cards if you count the value. He's thinking here, does he have Gores, the Emissary of Darkness? I mean, he might just be bluffing Gores, but we don't know. I like the, I respect the Gores bluff. I respect it. Um, but it doesn't look like he has it, which makes sense. Dude, Galaxia is just raw-dogging this fairy deck. It's so nice. Okay, here's Normal Summon Sirocco. This can be a pump run over the Tethius. That's going to be the second Sirocco of the game. So having a lot of his comeback plays here, working out very nicely. Keeping it interactive. Uh, both players had a very nice hand. Yes, I agree, deal with it. Can't attack into the Shining Angel. 
Shining Angel is going to be a little bit awkward here. It's sticking and blocking that Valhalla from, from making anything happen. However, there are four fairies. So if there's a Christia in the future, well, let's just say. Galaxia says, big think. Both players waking up. Justice is done, says, do we have a top eight breakdown? Not yet. Not yet. This is a uh, round eight this last round before top eight cut so the winner of this this match gets into top eight it's a pretty high stakes match for these guys um normal summon dd warrior lady so dd warrior lady is included in this list makes sense to grab it off shining angel it's going to take 800 here to banish the blackwing armed wing is there going to be some sort of crash grab another dd warrior lady we had top eight on screen. Well, the title says top eight because I need people to click on the video, but <laughs> it's going to be, it's round eight and then top eight. Okay, he has a second warrior lady. That's actually pretty key here. That means he can clear both monsters through potential Kalut and special summon another Tethius off of Valhalla. That's disgusting. He says answer this or lose. And now there's only, oh, he's getting another draw step. Wasn't a fairy. What could it have been? If it wasn't a fairy, what could it have been? Looking to close out the game, he's going to swing with the Tethius into a potential D-Prison Mirror Force. One D-Prison is already gone. Sets a back row. Here comes Compulsory Evacuation Device on the Tethius. Is there a game shot? A potential game shot? Torrential Tribute on the Kalut Summon. Okay. Main Phase 2 sets a back row, passes the turn. Are we going to see special... Oh, here's Dust Shoot, going to view the hand. Possibly two lethal threats? He's taking notes here. Let's see what, what's in the hand. Justice is done says has Valhalla. Um, so he has DD Warrior late Iados. I mean, this game's over. He just Valhalla's out Iados and then attacks for game. So we're going next. All right. Has Valhalla become standard in fairies? Uh, I posted a video with it recently, and I've been talking to a couple of the other top players about it. So um, I think that people are thinking that there's a lot of merit to Valhalla. That was a crazy game. That was an insane game. And uh, I. it was impressive that GBO was able to play through that in any capacity um, after his opponent unconditionally just drew five cards. Like, that is crazy. Um, that, was a, that was a really, really sick game. I'm not going to lie. But sideboarding, things are probably going to be difficult on both sides i think deck devastation virus obviously is a consideration for gbo but against these valhalla lists like it hits the hecatrice hits the angel and hits the warrior lady sure but it doesn't hit the um you know the valhalla power plays which are the important things so you're going to need more than just deck dev to win this matchup and then on galaxia side of things you could have things like royal decree you could have some really hateful stuff consecrated light that sort of stuff that just really makes this matchup easy. So uh, I'm curious to see how this goes. Here comes Normal Summon Bora. Set back row past the turn. That sounds good, Sevilla. Um, whatever, whatever happened there, I thought Weston was Hershey. Anyway. Back to back to the game. Back to the game at hand. Uh, now me after buying first Edison Secret Tethius. Here comes the strength of fairies into Black Wings. I mean, they can trade one card into the monster very effectively. Cuts off Blizzard. Cuts off Icarus Attack. Pitch for Hecatrice. This is exactly how you want to play this matchup. Purple Flip saying Tethius getting as far as so lit. This deck is gas. And there's an Archlord Christian play. This is a little bit vulnerable to an Icarus Attack here. Um, but I mean, you force it. And if there's no Icarus attack, this is one hell of a card. I'll just say it. Harsh Lord Christia is disgusting. I think the back row is an Icarus attack. If I had to read, it's possible it's something like a space typhoon, but then what it got used on Bahala, honestly. So I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an Icarus attack based off of uh, nothing getting played there, basically. Here's Gale, have the Christia. Uh, if there's a Kalut here, that could work. However, Icarus Attack is mandated by the gods, by Shai Hulud, if you will. Um, 
any Dune enjoyers in the chat. Um, anyway. Christia can still run over the Gale. And there's that Icarus attack. I mean, we kind of saw this coming. Uh, the new back row is an interesting one. An interesting development, if you will. Sets monster passes. Thank you so much for becoming a level one Ed head, Kyle Crudo. I think that's a res resub, right? Shout out to Kyle Crudo. You play melee, don't you? I recognize your name. You're a good melee player. <laughs> I've seen your bots. <laughs> Wait, hold up. <laughs> hold on, just a second. <laughs> uh, shout out the goat. <laughs> All right, no effect on the Nova Summoner is intriguing. Special Cyber Dragon. Normal Nova Summoner. Battle phase action. Attacks with the Cyber Dragon. I like attacking with the Nova Summoner first, possibly, but... Yeah, the Nova Summoner gets you the Christia and the Grave. Or, not the Christia, the Fairy and the Grave. I like crashing the Nova Summoner first. It's more forcing. Because then you get Christia this turn. You play Yu-Gi-Oh! with Kalendi a lot. So that means you must win a lot. <laughs> at Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just I'm just hating. I'm just hating because Kalindi didn't enter. <laughs> oh man, this is hype. Okay, set back row. Set back row. Pass the turn. Hella back rows in this bitch, if you will. Possible mirror force for a solid two for one, but then Christia's coming down. But then you have to be careful of royal oppression. So. I love the two two chat message think. That's truly a big think. He was so busy thinking, he couldn't. He couldn't process typing the word. So he's gonna take 14, 2100. Life total is getting a little bit dangerous. Cause you know, like, once you drop below a certain point, like, there's a specific battle trap in the fairy deck that makes it dangerous ign otago says no gvs in top eight top eight isn't happening yet <laughs> uh, top eight is it's still round eight but yes i don't think there will be i'm pretty sure there's no gbs in contention for top eight i believe they all landed around the x2 zone moving into round eight which is not where you want to be if you want good tiebreakers for making it into top cut big thonk here from gbo he he be thonking he really do be thonking does he have a monster? Does he have a play? I have a feeling he might have some dead cards. I suppose we shall see. Is that a Sirocco? What is happening? What the fuck is happening? Is Dueling Book just breaking? Hold up. What the fuck is going on? Am I seeing this right? Huh? Boah! We were watching a high stakes fucking match! Oh my god. Okay. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Oh my gosh, am I getting DDoSed? What is happening? Come on, man. Why is Dueling Book crashing my fucking shit? Huh? What the fuck was that? Um... What is it called? I forget what it's called. Galaxia, there we go. 
Konami shutting us down. Yeah, yeah, he is. All right, so we missed some shit. My bad, guys. Might be, might be, might be, might be. We missed some shit. I fucking, I'm trying to piece it together. It looks like there was a lot of trades. The Nova Summoner grabbed a Consecrated. The Consecrated got destroyed somehow by a Deck Dev or an Icarus. Interesting. Okay. Here comes Sacrifice for Tethius past the turn. And that's going to be Brain Control for game two. Well, good thing we caught the end of it at least, but it looks like there was, yeah, like I said, the Consecrated and the Deck Devs and that sort of stuff, um, which is hype. One second, side deck snack time. Bro, what? <laughs> what? GPO be snacking. He, his only loss in this tournament, by the way, was to him conceding to his opponent so he could snack. I want you guys to mull that over. Strong player. <laughs> his only loss was to himself. <laughs> to his own hunger. Uh, issue with the pairings. Brutal. All right. This deck seems cool, but giga toxic. It's really sick. I'm a fan. Has he resolved a Tethius draw a million yet? He did in game one, yeah. Lost last two rounds in God Hand now. True. I think it depends on if Raunuk wins, Diego, because Raunuk being 8-0 could give someone the god tiebreakers. Uh, Raunuk just lost? Okay. Interesting. All right, here comes 1,400 plus 1,500 swings. Big damage coming across. Thanks, HPR Shredder. I appreciate that. We got a Black Whirlwind and a Search. It means a lot. I will say there are haters afoot, but alas, if we were not making things happen, there would not be haters afoot. You feel me? You definitely feel me. Yeah. Interesting choice to not go for the... Uh... Oh, that's got to be an Icarus, right? He's posturing like Icarus. Icarus or Mirror Force. Guardian Yellows? Holy fuck! That is so much damage! That's so crazy. How much damage is that? It's not quite game. 
so many big things. It's a tricky situation to be in. Normal summon Hecatrice. Okay, that is game. Start battle phase. Okay, start battle phase. Icarus attack. Sacrificing Bora. There's Solemn Judgment. Does he have his own Solemn Judgment to counter back? It's possible he has Mirror Force or a Battle Trap for the Iados. You fool. He does have Mirror Force, yeah. That is difficult. That is a difficult moment to be in. Yeah, that's tough. And now here comes the Blizzy. And you're at 4,000. Um, I think you have to let the Icarus attack resolve. Honestly. Because now you're dead on board. Yeah. That's tough. Jay says still takes the first swing. No, he doesn't because he said start battle phase. He said start battle phase, Icarus. Then he solemns the Icarus, then he declares the attack. He says, I really hope I tiebreaker carry. What a way to lose in FML. Uh, because Raunek lost, I don't know if Galaxia is going to make it into the top eight. We have to calculate. We have to calculate. I saw what happened to Duck Tracy and decided to play around Solemn. It happened on stream. There you go. He played around Solemn. Sick. Sick matches. Galaxia going to be moving on at X2. GBO going to be guaranteed in top 8. Um, Very close set. I think had he held the Solemn, he would have been alright there. You just take the 2 for 2 with Icarus. And then you connect. And then you Solemn the next normal. And then... And then what, you know? It was a good run. Played quite a lot of goats. Very base. All right. He thought on someone for a while. Good solemn read. Yeah. Yeah, I agree as well. So, for this round, I need... I need a moment to answer some Discord messages, but we're going to pop into a match that's still happening. Let's see. A pro post versus Televisual. Maybe we'll check and see if they're still playing. That was an intense game. They are still playing. So this is a round eight match. I need to check some stuff on Discord real quick. Sorry, guys. A lot of stuff is like messed up because we had to manually do the pairings because challenge crashed. Um, but we're making it work. Interesting stuff. We got Frog Hero versus D Diva Hero with Gravekeeper Spy. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, give me just a second. I'm gonna go to the restroom and handle this Discord stuff, and I'll be be right back. I gotta I gotta pop a little. Be right back. B R B. Okay, I'll be right back, guys. Entertain the chat. Entertain the chat.
Apologies. Apologies. Good people. Apologies, I've returned. Um, we're out here. Apologies. Silent movie, RVT, yes. A lot of silent movie. I don't remember his restroom. Um, <coughs> Galaxy says, if Propos wins, three of your opponents make the top eight. That should be a good sign of tiebreaker, but... I think, unfortunately for you, the person who lost to uh, the only undefeated, uh, unless there's no X2s that lost to him. So you're like, you might be out at ninth, Galaxia, but I need to double check. Um, basically. Raunik lost. Yeah, he lost. So, um, so Oddity's moving into top eight undefeated at uh, 701 with Diva Zombies, I believe. Or it might just be like regular zombies. And then Raunik's moving into top eight with Plant Frogs. And, um, yeah, it just depends. If, if no X2's lost to Oddity, which is something I need to confirm um, basically after all these matches are concluded. He's on instant zombies. Okay, yeah. So Future Fusion is the start here from Televisual. Someone film me and what are these guys playing? They're playing Frog Hero and Diva Hero, right? I think I saw a Gravekeeper Spy last game. You lost to Oddity and your X2. Who was your other loss, Diego? Just want to make sure. Um... Was your other loss in this round? Did you lose in in this round versus Twilight? Okay. Um, it's. I need to double check the math after the round is over, but uh, that is most likely the case. I need to double check the math though, so don't don't get too um, don't get your hopes up yet. I just need to double check the math and make sure everything is is correct. Um, Silent Bandit says you lost to OG99 in Twilight. Do you have a chance? Uh, no. Your breakers are going to be worse than the person who lost to the undefeated. Because if, if someone loses to the undefeated, they're just going to have the best breakers. Uh, generally speaking, unless you lost to... Um, because the tie, because he's 701 and not AO, it might change things. So I need to run the numbers. I need to run the numbers, but, um, I'm still, I'm fairly certain that, um, because, because you lost to OG99 and Twilight, but, um, Diego lost to Twilight and Oddity and Oddity has a better record than OG99, he would get in over you. So you, you don't have a chance personally. Um, but I need to double check the math and make sure after everything, who gets in and whatnot. Um, this matchup is interesting. <laughs> Ryan, I, you're undefeated in bingo. Hey, yo, can we get three, three billion likes on the stream? Is that possible? <laughs> is that, is that possible? All right. You want X2? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good record. That's a really good record. That's solid. Um, definitely something to be proud of. Here comes Ocean. So he's on the Ocean technology. That means he probably plays E-Call as well. 1500 poke. <coughs> he doesn't have anything to add back, though. I guess he could technically bounce his Ocean. I don't even know. This matchup's interesting. I think it's it has a lot to do with um this guy. GG's JXO. Even with God's hands, it won't carry you there. Yeah, you almost made it. Next time, 
you you had a you had an insane start to your tournament. I'm sure you'll you'll get the top this season. Undoubtedly, you've been playing off the chain. Um. Yeah. Big think moment here. James says, why no top 16 with over 200 entrants? Moreno Valley was top 16. That's because people paid money to enter Moreno Valley. For the online ones, they've always been top 8. I generally want the people with the best records. I want it to be as close to uh, the original structure as possible, which was just like top 8 getting in from a double elimination structure. Because that way, we're not getting like top 16 the issue with top 16 is you can have someone go eight and one and not earn an invite so that's why we cut to top eight unfortunately for top 16 for events that people pay for you kind of have to cut to top 16 just so rob the man says complain about top eight instead of top 16 is crazy from someone who played a ton of magic when it was 15 rounds I think it's just people who, like, didn't do so hot that, like, are just talking about the bubble. Which, I've been there, man. Like, I've been, like, man, I wish it was top 16. You know, I've been there. I get that, but um, I really want... Ooh, mind control and a miracle. That's pretty nasty. Because that banishes the hero, and now... Now there's no coming back. And he Kaius the mirror force. Quite nasty indeed. Quite nasty indeed. Oh my goodness. He's kind of cooking here. Televisual's kind of cooking. Um, yeah, I, I you know. Uh, but my my response is usually just next time I'll play better. You know. You're in a hard cusp at ninth to twelfth, and you're not even salty about top eight. Low key love the prestige of top eight makes the top way more earned. Yeah. Oh, DD Crow on the Lone Treeborn, that's also massive. Televisual having all the great interaction here. My control, DD Crow, and pulling the rug. Um, yeah, dude can get sacked. You can get sacked in top 16 going undefeated, and that happens a lot. And I just don't like that vibe. I feel like it takes a little bit away from the integrity of the event, um, where it's like legit only like the top decks get in, and only the top players get in. Um, like, as much as I would like to be, like, to include top 16, because it would include a large variety of decks. You got cred for going 5-3. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't... <laughs> like, if I go 5-3, I'm disappointed in myself. I'm not, like, hyped I got top 16 in a fucking 7-round tournament or whatever. Like, I went 5-2 um at the xanadu event i went to and oh soul exchange that's a good soul exchange and i was like i should have just played better you know what i mean i wasn't even mad that it cuts the top eight i was like i should have just won another match okay soul exchange targeting the absolute zero um Solemn on the Soul Exchange. Interesting. Compulsor Solemn. Okay. He sets a monster. He's forced to set because he has no play outside of that Soul Exchange. That was a big Solemn. That was a big Solemn. And there's a Phoenix Wing. I dislike this use of Phoenix Wing. I think this is actually a mistake. Um... You should attack first, and then Phoenix Wing after Declaration, get the replay to play through Battle Fader, and then you at least connect for 25 if he has Battle Fader. Um, but it looks like looks like Televisual is going to take the win, and he's going to be able to move on to top 8. So, for people involved, so I think um, this is the last of the X1s, OG99 versus shadow 23 dx so the winner of all of these matches makes it into top eight one through six here um and then uh the loser of 
the first match makes it into top eight as well. So Raunik and Oddity are both locked. Um, I believe Twilight won over Diego, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, GBO won over Galaxia. Televisual won over Apropo. So we got Tim and OG99 and Shadow. We got to check on um, to see if they're still playing. And then I can formulate. I can formulate the top eight bracket. Sorry, guys. This has been so scuffed. Fucking, um, fucking challenge, man. Okay, looks like we got Dragon Turbo with Kaminari attack based. And hero frogs and it looks like hero frogs is going to take it while wow, we caught the clutch moments tim pontes dealing the last hundred points your shadow silent bandit okay okay so you lost so tim pontes so our top eight is Raunuk, oddity twilight gbo televisual tim pontes and um OG99. And then there's one other player that I gotta figure out, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Diego. Because he has the best breakers. Genuine question, would it be possible to just bring back double elimination for future online online RBETs? I feel like people only like Swiss for the chance of going X2s getting in anyways. So that's the thing, is when I ran it as double elimination, everyone complained it wasn't Swiss. And now that I'm running it as Swiss, everyone complains it's not double elimination. You just can't fucking win. Like people wanna play more rounds. Or people want to do this, or people want to do that. And it's just like, it's the same at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter. I think the biggest complaint about double elimination is when someone loses early, they have to wait a long time. And that's totally understandable, and that kind of affects the player experience. Like, if someone loses round one, they're they're kind of waiting around for loser's bracket to catch up to them, basically. They want Swiss plus top 16, yes, but that's less competitive, and it's like more variance. It introduces an element of variance. And it can knock people out of invites after they go undefeated, which I think is bullshit. Um, Swiss is just classic. You don't know what double elimination is. It's like what Melee uses. Okay, I think we have... Um, I think we have the top 8... I'm going to DM Sevilla and we can get the bracket. Roger Baker says, why not do top 16, but then only top eight get invites? That's literally the problem. Because if someone gets top 16 going undefeated and then loses in top eight, they went X1 and didn't get an invite. So we're knocking out someone who had the better record. <laughs> what? <laughs> How would Bandit Keith have fared in RBT? He would have got thrown out, Kappa. Okay, I'm going to message Sevilla the record, so. Um, oddity. Um, second seat. Twilight. Uh, Round arc. Twilight. Uh, GBO. Televisual. I think that was... A really close close run uh, for Valhalla, but the breakers aren't there. If Raunuk had won, Galaxia would have made it, but since Oddity won, um, I think Diego makes it. No, Gladiator Beast did not make top eight. Um, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. GBO, Zimpantes, OG99, and 4, 5, 6, 7, and... Okay, we have our top eight. We have our top eight. Glads for the win says, what is your question? I don't even understand your question. I'm sorry, man. I don't understand your question. All right, top eight is 
right now, as of right now, we have Oddity, Raunuk, Twilight, GBO, Televisual, Tim Pontes, OG99, and Diego. So a lot of frogs. I think we've got at least, we got one zombie, one frog plants. I don't know what Twilight is playing. GBO is playing Black Wings. Televisual is on Diva Hero. Tim Pontes is on Frog Hero. I don't know what OG99 is playing. And Diego's on Frogs as well. So. Right. What's the name of the player playing zombies? I believe Oddity is playing zombies. What is Glad's talking about? What are you talking about? What what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're referencing right now. OG99 is on Value Turbo. Oh, so Value Turbo did make it in top eight. Interesting. You went 6-2, Joseph. Very close. Yeah, DV Hero's fun. I have a good time playing it. All these decks are fun. They all look sweet. Okay, I'm gonna... Post the top 8 pairings here in a second. I'm just gonna make it in challenge, basically. Oh, man. It's been a day. It's been a day. Give me a moment, folks. We're making the challenge bracket for the top eight. We're doing it. We're cooking right now. We're cooking a little bit. We got some banger gameplay coming your way very shortly. So make sure you are chilling. I got a dude DMing me about a judge call that happened yesterday. I got a dude DMing me about other stuff. Bro, I, I was up at 4 a.m. Fixing this bracket. I don't know, man. I don't know. All right. Uh, Challenge.com. Bros be acting like we get paid for this. Did Galaxia make top eight? No, he was ninth. He's the true, the true uh, bubble or whatever. Justice is done, depending on who you ask about the format, people have very different degrees of what is good and what is not good. So, um, you know, I, I have a different opinion from, from everyone, but, um, uh, Yeah. I don't think Value Turbo is that good. That's just my opinion. I feel like it's a... Well, I think it's good, but I just... I think it's manageable, I guess. It's not... I, I would never, never say it's anything close to Tier 0. Um, so we've got Oddity, Ronick, Oh, sick. Okay. Sick to you so much. Looks like Sevilla made the uh, bracket, so we've got the bracket. Shout out Sevilla. Shout out all the mods who have helped out today and yesterday, making this very simple. Is this RVT the first RVT season? Get invites. Hand down if someone already has one. Um, does someone in top eight already have one? Yes, they do get handed down. 
if someone has one. Um, if someone already has one. I don't know if any of these players already have one. Yeah, sorry, Galaxia. Your deck is sick, and I think if you keep cooking with it, you'll absolutely make it, but you just needed to win that last one. And that was, that was kind of a tough moment there with the Solemn Judgment. Sometimes it comes down to that. I definitely feel for you there. It was a tricky one. Galaxia dropped the deck list. Oh, we'll be doing we'll be doing all sorts of deck profiles. You already know. Um, so we have the top eight posted, I believe. Um, let me see if let me see if we can get the. Um, yeah, let's see, a lot of people mad in my DMs, I don't know, man, do you not want me to throw this event? <laughs> I'm doing it for you guys, <laughs> holy shit. Okay, I think we're about to start top A soon. it we out here people always complain at smh man yeah like look at this keegan has a god complex it's like what what do i have a god complex over over hosting a free tournament for a community that i fucking fostered like <laughs> what is my god complex here that's insane yeah people like this are like fucking like delusional like they have like brain rot to the nth degree it's like is that like they're hoping for their five minutes of fame or for like the the laugh you know what i mean you're getting clout off of it you think this is clout <laughs> you think thirteen thousand subscribers is clout in the year of fucking our lord 2024 this is funny i'm having conversations with a fucking insane person right now that's crazy it says so mean I'm being mean to you? Bro, how are you spending your day right now? <laughs> That's crazy. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. No, this is funny. This is actually funny to me. This is so pathetic. This is like the definition of pathetic. It's like, bro, I'm trying to host a community event. I'm trying to host a community event for free that I'm paying for the fucking prize pool. And like, like, that's insane to me. Like, people, this is people who are actually unhinged. These are people who need help. Like, bro, what are you talking about? Ignore them. It's a fun tournament. We all chilling together. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Why are people so mad? Like, what? <laughs> Fucking psychopaths. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, my God, man. Anyway, it's just like, what? What is, what do you stand to gain from this? I don't even understand. Like... <laughs> I guess you got a couple people to laugh. I don't know. That's wild. That people are nuts, man. Bro needs to go to church today. The Church of Coderius, brother. Is it probably the guy that got banned yesterday? Maybe. I don't know. I don't care. People are going to hate. What decks made top eight? I will get you a breakdown momentarily. Check when the profile has been made. No, I don't feel the need to give more attention to people who clearly just want attention. Glads for the win says, how about you don't read their comments through the voice in your head and actually invite to voice chat? Because this isn't a drama stream. This is just me trying to host a community tournament for free. This is just us fucking vibing. 
and like playing the game that we love and putting on for the fucking scene like that's literally what this is this isn't about inviting psychos onto the fucking channel and platforming them <laughs> what <laughs> what do i get out of that <laughs> you feel me yeah whoever this is has problems either that or they they need something better to do with their life um sick so we have the top eight coming soon And top eight is beginning at eight fifteen. Is Beast King Barbaros legal? It is Versa. You watched American Fiction after we talked about it. It was a nice movie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I don't know how to read your username though. It's kind of long. The gaming channel. I'll just call you gaming channel. I'll just call you Hunter. All right, we're gonna watch Twilight versus Tim. Congrats on all these players, to all these players, by the way, for earning their invites. Um, uh, very well done. They played out of their goddamn mind. We are going to watch, we're going to watch Tim. One of your favorite of the best pictures. Yeah, it was a really good movie. Let's watch Oddity, because he went undefeated. And I don't think we've watched him too much yet. I don't think we've watched a full match of Oddities yet. Do any of these players already have their rulers invites? Um, we can check that. If any of them has the role. If any of them t topped the charity tournament in December. Yeah, I don't think any of them have their invites yet. I think this is all first time invites for them. No one at Locals wants to play Edison. I'm sorry, Luciano. Thankfully, you have a lot of really <coughs> dope people online <coughs> who will play with you in this format. So at least, yeah, DB does suck, I agree. But we're doing what we must. We're going to watch Oddity versus Peanut, 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 Peanut. And then the backup match is going to be Raunuk versus OG99. Very excited for this top eight. Finally, we're getting underway. Top eight. Oddity versus Pina, aka Diego. Now, Diego is, Diego is a strong player. He is topped in previous events. Don't know much about Oddity, but he seems like a strong player as well. Going undefeated is no... It's, it's a very, very solid testament to the fact that you're good at this game. You can also play Edison on Nexus now. Do they know the decks that are viable in Edison? A lot of peeps I know got in because we are showed, you showed them the decks and I reminded them of when they were young. Yeah, I think seeing the decks in Edison is pretty hype. You don't want to play Snake Eyes? Fucking me neither, bro. Alright. Player has selected Dueling Partner. All right, looks like Diego is winning the die roll. 
Shout out to War God and Alger Dongas. Other players, very strong players. They probably helped Oddity Prep or they're probably his homies or something. Those guys are killing it. I know both of them. They're, they're pretty strong players. Well, actually, I don't know if I know Algear, but I know War God for sure. Um, all right. Jar for turn. Interesting moments here. We got the T set, the T set war. Sack Treeborn for Caius. A classic. A classic play. Asks for Solemn. Caius targets the set monster. It's going to banish Goblin Zombie, and that's a pretty big lead. Already. Attacks with the Caius. Let's see if there's a battle trap. There's no battle trap, so. Pretty tough situation. No way to stop the Caius, and the back row. We're not really certain about it. We don't know what it is. It could be anything. Brain control, take Kaya's. Attacks for 2400. Sevilla asks if top 8 matches are timed still. Um, yes. They are. Normal summon Krebens. And there's Torrential. So, main deck Torrential from Diego. Uh, pretty solid. It's going to go two for two with Brain, but the Kaios already put him up a card, and that Treeborn's going to represent resources once this other back row gets used. Looks like Diego is also on the Heroes as well. So he's going to be able to find Stratos and pick up even more card advantage. Stratos Search. This is going to grab, I'm assuming, some sort of payoff. It could also grab Ocean. But realistically, it's going to grab like the Malicious Edge, something like that. Some sort of payoff. Oh, no, it is grabbing Ocean. Interesting. He's finding value in looping the Stratos. Call of the Haunted is going to target Krebens. This is just to preserve life points at this point, but um, yeah, this is tricky. It's going to pay 800 to negate the attack. So that's going to leave him with the Krebens in play. He's down a lot of cards. He needs to make something happen. Oddity needs to cook here. He has no zombie access. Call of the Haunted makes sense as a turn one set. There's the zombie access. So this could be... Um, you know, you make a synchro here. It's going to go Bionic. Probably pri priority. I would have gone Koya. But... Swagger says, does that work? Does what work? Target call. Oh, nice play. I like this. Gets the Mizuki in the grave. Uh, gets him a nice little plus one there. I think. Yeah, it's a plus one. Okay, but now what? Are we just attack gang? Is that really just it? Attacks over the Stratos, deals 500. Treeborn is in grave, but there is that back row. Here comes Book of Life. This could actually bring uh, banish the Treeborn. And this can slow down Diego considerably, but he does play two Treeborns, so it's like not unrealistic he can get the second one going before a Book of Life is found. A second Book of Life is found. Type 336 says, will there ever be an RVETNC? Is that North Carolina? Or is that something else? Yes, um... Not in the near future. RBT Texas would be cool too, but it's just a lot of work, man. It is just a lot of work. And it is not a paying job. It's a job that pays you nothing. So, I would rather not do it. Let's bring RVT to Chicago. Of course, of course. 
I would love to go to Chicago and Texas and North Carolina. But again, <laughs> costs a lot of money, so... <laughs> Uh, the money needs to happen somewhere. Otherwise, it uh, doesn't make sense to do it. Bring RBT to Korea. That'd be hype. I know a true hero would be hype if that happened. Because I think he lives in Korea. RBT Iowa, we can play on the cornfields. That sounds lit. RBT to Chile? Oh, let's go. Okay, here's the Phoenix Wing targeting the Pyramid Turtle. Interesting choice. Targeting the Pyramid Turtle. He'd be hyped too. You live there. Do you live in Korea? That's hype. I'd love to go to Korea one day. That'd be sick. It would be a lot of fun. He's really thinking here if he wants to attack with the Bionic into potential gores. RBT to the moon. I think the perception of RBT is very high right now, which is good. But the reality of RBT is that <laughs> it operates at a loss. <laughs> so there's that. Twelve hundred attacks. Okay, there is the gorse. So he does have the gorse. He can run over the token. You're still going to hold RBT to the moon, baby, to the moon. Diamond hands. Any update on Laurel? Um, it's a little bit early in the morning. I haven't heard back from the Feel Good Gaming guys. I did message them to see if there was any venue updates um, that we could announce today, but it's a little bit early. I haven't heard back from them yet. Um, but as soon as we know, you guys will also know. promise Kaius on goblin zombie might have won in this match Kaius is a game winning card it's really really good this matchup is probably tough um i think what might have actually lost him the match was not attacking with the goblin zombie over the treeborn frog operates at a loss due to man hours is it not run by volunteers or do you mean the prize pool so I'm going to be incredibly transparent right now. I don't live in all of those locations. So travel costs are very high. Um, even for like, and I travel very light, but there's a certain amount of gear that we need to bring to make the events happen. And there's a certain amount of staff that we need to make the events happen. And venue costs are also very high. So like, if one of those things isn't like drastically diminished, then we'd have to be charging like insane amounts. Like we'd have to be charging like somewhere in the like ballpark of like 60 to $70 for entry, which is ridiculous. Like, um, like right now we charge, I'm charging $40 for entry at the RBETs because I want it to be like as accessible as possible and still be able to pay all the staff and like make sure everyone is like chilling, you know? Um, but, um, the only way we can do that is if we operate out of venues that like are down to work with us at like um at like a a diminished um cost or whatever like venue spaces that basically aren't charging us more or less um or they're charging us very little or they have like certain stipulations that we could easily meet like a certain amount of vendor sales or whatever so that's pretty much that um, it's a very, like, it's a, it's, I would consider the RBETs, like, for the community and not necessarily for myself personally. The only reason I wanted to do them was because it was something I wanted to try to do, like, to see if I could do it and, like, to see if it, there was a demand for it. And there d absolutely is. I think there's a huge demand for retro Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments and this type of stuff. And the RBETs kind of were a kick in the pants for Konami to start getting their retro Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments going as well. So my goal is pretty much, my goal with the RBETs was to get someone else to run them. 
<laughs> basically, so I could participate in them. Um, and I've kind of half succeeded. I mean, Konami runs them, but they're like, they're like, um, you know, they're pretty good. I like all things considered, like obviously Vegas was a little bit sloppy. You know, the last big Edison one was a little bit messy, but for the most part, like the community is hella chill. Like the vibes are there. It's, you know, Uh, Grumpy says, large enough card shops would be happy to host because of all the money people spend on singles and stuff. You'd think that, but a lot of the card shops that are large enough to host an RBET, like, don't even carry Yu-Gi-Oh! singles. So, it's kind of like, they have to stock Edison singles on top of, like, the other stuff. Because Edison Yu-Gi-Oh! players, well, some of them do play other games, it's just, it's a small percentage. Like, it would make much more sense for them to throw an event for, like, Pokemon, for example, where the sales are amazing. How did Fraser do? I think he went X3 or X4. I don't remember. Um, you can check his standings in the Discord. I think he lost to Galaxia on Valhalla Fairies, if I remember correctly. Which is interesting. Oh, Bottomless on Stratos. I wonder why he did that. Maybe he wanted to cut off the Miracle Fusion or something? I don't really know. Your old locals was near an abandoned mall. <laughs> that sounds so accurate. They had a dual terminal machine. I mean, it just sounds accurate. It sounds like everybody's old locals was like in some like fucking warehouse. You're just like, what is going on here? Yeah, I think the meta for Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments has shifted away from locals and shifted more towards like pop-up cash tournaments. Like we have this space, we're going to throw a 5k and then they run it like on really tight margins and then they make like a couple grand. And that's like the new meta because everyone's storefront is just like online now. So like tournaments are all just to drive traffic to your online storefront. It's a really different, uh, it's a really different environment than it was like 10 years ago or 14 years ago. I don't know if you guys find this type of conversation interesting or if you want me to talk more about the match. If you want me to talk more about the match, let me know in the comments or the chat. And if you want me to talk about this stuff or if this is interesting to you guys at all, um, I'm totally willing to continue this type of conversation. Uh. The owner of your store sold 25,000 singles to you and your friend at 40% because they make no money on it. That's tough. Okay, Spirit Reaper pokes the, uh, the Treeborn. Literally costs money to pay someone to sort through it. I actually heard from someone recently that they've been developing a lot of card sorting machines. Which is interesting. Um... RBT Mexico. I would love that. That would be like, I would love to just go to Mexico one day. That'd be so cool. Yeah, the card sorting machines are very expensive though. They're not very accessible. Anyone in chat know the top eight breakdown? I can answer that question for you. We've got <coughs> zombies, frogs, <laughs> frogs, Black Wings? Diva Hero with Gravekeeper Spy? Frogs. Whatever OG99 is playing. And I think Black Wings. I could be wrong. I could be wrong about. I don't know what OG99 is playing. Vayu Turbo in shambles. Oh, no, there's one Vayu Turbo. That's what, but that's what OG99 is playing. He's playing one Vayu Turbo. No Vayu is a blessing. Yeah, that deck is... I don't know. I find it boring. Some people really enjoy it. And that's the beauty of Edison format is like... You can really enjoy your boring deck. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Do in-person RBTs allow OCG bling? Working on that. Um, 
Not the ones this year, though. The ones this year will be following uh, Konami policy. Rob the Man says, I like Vayu. I just don't enjoy the discourse around it being the best because it's blatantly wrong. I think it's interesting, the, the best deck discourse, because it's quite infinite in Edison format because most decks are only the best deck within the context, right? And I've had this conversation a billion times on stream, but yeah. No deck is the best deck in Edison format, and that much is clear. If there was a best deck, we would all know it, and we wouldn't play the format. Jay asks a good question. Then what's the best deck? That's what everyone wants to know, but there just isn't one, and that's okay. That's why we like the format, is because there just isn't one. Elijah says again, thank you for your advice. You asked around find out for losing, and you played out, and you ended 6-2. Congratulations. That's very impressive record. Well done, Elijah. What were you playing? If you don't mind sharing with the chat. 6-2 is pretty good. Do IRL RBTs require proper route of print? No, they do not. But they do use the Edison errata's or whatever. Like, if you use like a reprint card that has the wrong errata, it will still be ruled as the Edison errata, basically. Um. Hero Frog players should play Prisma instead of Alias. Prisma only sends Ocean, right? So it's just worse than Alias in every capacity, except for that it can randomly send Ocean. Big bottomless here, but Diego still has a shitload of cards. I feel as though Oddities kind of bled a lot of cards this game. Can send Malicious Edge. I suppose, yeah. If you want to dedicate the extra deck space, even though you do play Junk Synchron sometimes. And you do actually need that extra deck space. Uh, I suppose. Here comes Vanity's Fiend. That's a big one. Especially on low resource. Set back row pass. I think you can make more arguments for like... best deck if there was like one deck that was like constantly winning everything but there just isn't you feel like prisma would be cool in the lad turbo bayou build frog vibe what i'm confused sorry why would prisma be cool there i don't understand what would prisma accomplish for the light and darkness dragon deck okay double dupe Pass the turn back. Can't you send Dandy off Gaia? No, you can't, Dianthea. You can't send things that aren't specifically named for Prisma. So, you can't sit, you can't reveal Elemental Hero Gaia at all for Prisma. Otherwise, it would be busted as fuck. <laughs> it would be so broken. Imagine a monster that just has a foolish burial built into it. That would be fucking so good. 18 turn clock, Elemeo. You're really out here on that grind. Better than Foolish even copies the name. Yeah, exactly. Sam Scott says, I think the closest thing to the best deck is Vayu Turbo. Damn, cope harder. <laughs> People, uh, let's see here. Zombie Master, that doesn't get you anywhere, though. Like This just doesn't get you anywhere, sadly. I think... Maybe you should have just held the Zombie Master a little bit longer. Because where are you going? Where are you going with the Zombie Master? What's he doing? 
Is he bringing out the play? Like, what? what is he doing? What is Zombie Master doing? Are you summon priority chain torrential? Is torrential gone? It's not gone. Okay. So I guess there's summon priority chain torrential, but that takes three of your cards to out two of your opponents. Oh my god. Dude. <laughs> it's a sad day. It's a sad day. It's a sad day. Jay says Vayu had most wins last year. Blackwing had most tops. Guess which had the most entrance? Those two decks. It's almost like conversion rate is equal to entrance. Wow. Shocking. <laughs> Guess what? Dragon Turbo won back-to-back -back RBETs and got second place at multiple RBETs despite only like one person entering at the tournament. But nobody's saying Dragon Turbo is the best deck. Even though it has a near 100% conversion rate to tournament wins, which is insane. <laughs> like, anyone want to talk about that? <laughs> You guys, uh, you can cherry pick any data to talk about any deck, but the fact of the matter is any deck can win in this format. It's not like, like, there are still decks that are being discovered. Like, look at the Tethius deck that got ninth at this tournament. Like, that we haven't seen that style of deck, like, in this tournament before. There's the Plant Frog deck that everyone thought was really good in whatever. Yeah, Frogs won a lot of tournaments last year, so clearly best deck, right? No, it's just not, you know? Diva Hero won some tournaments last year. Like best deck? No, maybe I don't know. We can you can cherry pick whatever data you want. Compulsory bounce the vanities. Oh my gosh, he's just bleeding more cards. There's the vanities again. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like people just. Dang, that was a tough one from Oddity. Revealing the creature swap at the end. A little bit of spice. I think he was never really in a position to pull ahead, and his sideboard cards didn't really come through for him. What did he side here? A DD Crow? A Lightning Vortex? Neither of these cards are exceptional against frogs. They're only additional ways to go minus versus a deck that does a great job of going plus. So, um, tough situation. Having to pitch the Dark Arm there, not being able to navigate to a Dark Arm. Like, he just really never got... He got really unlucky, I'd say. Um, tough match, tough match, but congratulations to Oddity on earning his invite, going undefeated in Swiss, and Diego's going to move on to top four. We're going to hop over to the other top eight match, um, that's happening right now, which is going to be, um, we'll check in on Twilight, because I want to see what Twilight's playing. We, is he not? Is that not his dueling book name? All right, all right. Oh, it's back to the meadow. That's right. That's right. That's right. What are good cards versus frogs? Um, pulling the rug. I think pulling the rug is really good. My favorite card to side versus frogs is probably pulling the rug, because it's most often going to get you a lot of value. It's going to get you, like, a summon. Like, it gets you a full turn, and it kills a monarch, which is, like, kind of the best. <laughs> kind of the best thing you can get. I don't hate soul release, but they can play around it once they've seen it. Um, and they can just play without the Treeborns game 2 and game 3, especially if they're playing, like, hero stuff and hella back row. <sighs> Why are y'all still setting monsters into Raiko? It could be dandy. You never know. You never know. All right. There's Kalut, the Moon Shadow. Looks like Pontes is down a game, so he's trying to get he's trying to get on the board here. Get some rest, Bluff Knock. It's hella early, brother. All right, looks like we're going to the next one. So we're moving into game three. Tim versus back to the bando.
Okay, looks like Televisual took it over GBO. So Diva Hero is going to move on to face off against Diego in top four. We're going to go watch that match, actually. Oh, no, wait. Can I even start that match yet? Let's see. I don't know, we'll catch the end of this one before we get into the top four. You overslept yesterday and missed the tournament, still recovering from your injury. I hope you're feeling better, Enrage Peacock. That sounded like a like a painful one when you were telling me about it. That stuff's brutal, man. Your job sounds like a lot of hard work. Joseph says, hasn't Mask of Restrict fallen off a bit since every frog deck has gone heavier on the trap line overall? Yes, it has, Joseph S. Because getting a Mask of Restrict Phoenix winged is <laughs> pretty brutal. B-Man says, if Power Creep is real, how is Dragon's Rouge in 2010 and 2024? Checkmate. That is bait on like six levels, and I love it. All right, turn one Black Whirlwind. Can't really complain about that chad prisma and sidra or bestiari facts all right substow activates no normal summon not able to put up the dupe block Ooh, that's but he one for one pitch and a normal summon does he not I maybe he maybe he's trying to monarch here. Yeah, I think I think he's thinking he needs to monarch here, which is interesting. He's gonna go after Shura. He must have searched Kalut, or he must have an out to the whirlwind, or he must just have back to back Caiuses, which could also be game. Yeah, it looks like there's an out to the whirlwind. That makes the most sense here. <laughs> it's lit. Frog Engine is very versatile. That's why it's tough to side against. It is versatile. Is it versatile? Is the Frog Engine versatile? If you play Unifrog, you have a lot of options. Joshua Schneider says you feel like Chalice is a slept on card in Edison. Chalice is one of those cards where it's like, you have to do something insane for Chalice to be good. And not many decks can do something insane. Is Frog Hero with Wing Blast and Break considered the best version of Frogs? Been focusing on modern, not kept up with the meta changes. There are two different styles of frogs in this top eight. There's the frog plant and there's the frog hero. But both of those styles of frogs are playing Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and Regeki Break. So I think Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and Regeki Break have proven to be powerful cards in retro formats. Um, not just Edison format, but GOAT format as well. Especially when you can facilitate, facilitate the discard. So I think that... In general, if your deck can support Wind Blast or Regeki Break, whether or not it's the hero version or the regular version, or if it's a different deck entirely, um, that means your deck is probably pretty strong. Because these cards are probably pretty strong. And by probably, I mean almost assuredly pretty strong. <laughs> like, uh, discard one card, pop anything, chainable, that's pretty good. Phoenix Wing Wind Blast has gotten a lot more play even in Tengu format with Cat Sith. Yeah, the Cat Sith deck in Tengu format is a great example of um, decks learning from the optimization in Goat and Edison format. And I think that it's really cool how the formats teach each other different things. Like, um, someone will discover something in Modern, like, um, let's get like a crazy combo deck, and then someone will come back to Edison, they'll be like, what if we built a crazy combo deck in Edison that's similar to a modern deck and thus Dragon Turbo is born? Or vice versa, you know, sometimes people will think like, oh, like 
generic pops are really good in goat format what if we brought that into uh tengu format or even like ravine ruler format or like later formats that are higher power level but generic pops are still really good jason says phoenix wing wind blast or regeki break for frogs so it depends on your build and it depends on what you're trying to beat i typically prefer phoenix wing wind blast and frogs because you can double stack with Ryza, and that's usually game ending. So if you, if you like Phoenix Wing something, and then you Ryza something, it's usually GG. Like, that's just usually an OTK, in a sense. Um, but, Regeki Break has a lot of good upsides, uh, particularly with dealing with boss monsters like uh, Judgment Dragon, or Dark Arm Dragon specifically, or some Synchro monsters that can be difficult to deal with. I mean, Phoenix Wing deals with single monsters the same. But, yeah, I don't know. But Regeki Break deals with, like, the big main deck boss monsters that you just want to clear. Or, like, in the Frog Mirror, Phoenix Winging, a Caius never really feels that good because you're just giving them an extra Caius activation. You've been testing my Zero Gravity idea in Amaryllis. That is based. I didn't even think of that. That's a really smart idea, Josh. Ever consideration for Karma Cut? Yeah, Round X deck in top 8 plays Karma Cut. So yes, there is a consideration for it. I think Karma Cut has a lot of value and a lot of merit. Chain Dust Tornado. So. He had the out all along. Man. I did not get enough sleep last night. Tough one. Yep. Not going to bring back Treeborn. Doesn't want to get pierced. Makes sense. Kind of gives him direct avenues with like stuff like Armed Wing. Big pump turns, etc. He's just going to set a back row and pass. He doesn't want to play into Kalut. This is a really interesting situation where... Back to the Bando is ahead. But Tim... I mean, Tim has enough life to survive a couple turns. And a couple of Monarchs, like a string of Monarchs or like a Miracle Fusion here could go kind of hard. That being said, though, I think he is he is down a lot. And the next push back to the Bando makes needs to break this and say, Pontes, you need to answer this now or you lose. Is Legacy or Yad, uh, of Yada Gras you main used to just bait removal and make it a plus one instead of a one for one? Yes, that's exactly why it's played. It's a plus one that baits the very limited spell and trap removal in Edison format. Um, and usually it's played in decks that can interact uh, on different layers, like with hand traps. So for example, um, in Black Wings, it's played because you can draw into Kalut or Didi Crow. In Fairies, it's played because you can draw into Honest, Herald of Orange Light, Gores, Tragodia, that sort of stuff. So uh, generally speaking, Legacy of Yada Grasu is good when you can draw into hand traps. That being said, you can still play it in decks that want to bait Heavy Storm. Here's the Dark Arm Dragon. This could be potential for a, a big boy game shot. And it looks like Back to the Bando is going to win the match. Tough one, but congratulations to Tim. Very strong player on earning his invite to RBET Rulers. Uh, very impressive run with Frog Hero. And Black Wings is going to move on uh, with a very powerful Dark Arm Dragon turn. So that's going to be Back to the Bando moving on. Televisual and Diego is going to be the top for match on this side. And then the winner of Raunuk and OG99 is going to be on the other side. Let's go ahead and check out Legacy with Tethius is also insane. Well, yes, that is, that's a combo piece there. We'll go ahead and hop into Raunuk's match and see how things are going there. You've been playing Frog Monarch with Flamvel Dogs, Magicians, and the Magics. What is the Magics? Is that rekindling? Really fun and gave you some local tops. Huh. So it's just, it's basically just Frog Monarch, but you have a Flamvel package in it. That's kind of cool. Like, you, it gives you like a little bit of synchro access, and then like Treeborn Frog is like a, a way to unbreak your drawn magicians. What do you guys think of that? That sounds kind of cool. 
Mr. Bretonia says, just joining stream now. What decks have made top eight? Uh, Black Wings, Frogs. I think this is Vayu Turbo. Chain Torrential. Oh, big Torrential. Big Torrential Gaming. Dark Armed gone. Gores is gone. Okay. Raunik out here. Fighting for his life in game three. OG99, really close to lethal moment. Did Glads make it? No, it did not. Joshua Snyder said, you remember playing at Edison. Everyone thought Flamebell would be the deck to beat. Yeah, I think back in the day, people didn't understand the concepts of bricks. And Flamebell did pretty well at the event, if I remember. Um, but back then, people didn't understand the concept of bricks. Not bringing back the Treeborn in attack is interesting. Okay, Allure of Darkness is going to draw two. Yes, smash like on the stream. Allure of Darkness is going to banish. He's thinking here. Spirit Reaper. A second Fossil Dino would be pretty big. It's actually crazy how much better people have gotten at deck building than back then. It's really cool. I think it's one of the most like beautiful things that like gives me hu hope in humanity. Like that we will always continue to learn and like grow our minds and shit whatever you get the idea all right is there a play <laughs> where are we at folks where are we at with the uh with the monarchs Raunuk, you got one of those bad boys looks like he's drawn one this game so far possibly a second no just the one We don't have a set, has heavy access to knowledge back then either. True. Everyone is older and wiser, and the internet is so much more broken. Substitute attack. Raiko. Raiko pops the toad. Would it not? Always maybe checking to see how many frogs are left. He definitely still has frogs left. Oh my gosh, that's a Necro Garden of Mild for the bingo. And I got bingo. Get owned. Get owned, everybody. I got bingo. You guys can play along with me here. Shout out Ryanite for the bingo card. That was a pretty big mill there. Does he not have Unifrog? Did he get banished? Oh, it's in the grave. Brutal. Of all the times to not have Unifrog. Hmm. There's DD Crow. So, DD Crow. Definitely one of the cards that would have been stuck in Ronak's hand that he could not have played. That's going to banish the Sirocco. It's not going to be able to hit that Necrogarna, which will keep OG99 alive for a moment. So i got to update the title here. Alright, cool. He needs Kaya's target itself. That would obviously be lethal, yes. <laughs> But any monarch would probably do here. Because I doubt that OG99 plays Battle Fader. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, there's a the second Dino. That's exactly what you needed here. Okay, set back row pass. Yeah, the Dino's crazy. Because, like, even if... Even if Raunek finds a way out of this, then he's going to target the back row. Let's see, is it chainable or is it like a mirror force? Then enemy controller switch Kaius to defense. Okay, he's going to take 12. Draw for turn is... Do we have a 1500 attack point monster? This has been a tough game. I mean, sideboard cards really putting in work. Really, really cooking here. That'd be funny if I was talking all that shit about Bayou Turbo and it just crushes the event. Switches the Dyna. Ooh, I like this. I like this. Plays around Mirror Force a little bit. Normal Summons Vayu. Still got the lethal pressure. It's going to attack for 800. 
And there's the Mirror Force. So, very smart play. I really like that play. That was really good. That was a really good play. Yeah, that was that was solid. Pass the turn back. Any summon here should do it. No, I lied. <laughs> that doesn't quite do it. it. Puts him to 100. This is a very close game. What could be done? What could be done? All right, standby phase, main phase one. Are there plays? No. Wow, locked under the Dyna. Brutal stuff. Soul exchange, but not a single tribute. Had the lads versus Vayu Turbo. Avenge the demon. That was sick. That was a sick match. So it looks like Damon is going to move on. Well played. Very well played around that mirror force. That was that was actually sick. That was a good uh, that was a good game there. All right. Um. So we've got our top four. We got Diego versus Televisual, which I think we are going to watch. And then we've got the top eight. Or not top eight, the other batch. I can't speak correctly. Yeah, of course. Dia Thanatos, I'm glad you've enjoyed. Both your losses were to OG99 and Twilight. These guys beat a lot of people. Chase's Vayu proving best deck once again. The Vayu Copers, they're back. Oh no, Vayu wins a match on stream. They're back. <laughs> Definitely, community sees Fossil Dino, Solo Frogs. Vayu triple best deck. <laughs> oh, the discourse. I can see the discourse happening already. So we're going to watch Televisual versus Diego. It's going to be Diva Hero versus uh, Hero Frogs, which is going to be a cool match to watch. Congratulations to the players you made. Top 8. Chain Burn potential tier 1 deck, but need high skilled pilot like you. I think Chain Burn is very good. You're, you are correct. Okay. The insanity. All right. Sick. So the top four decks we have right now are Frog Hero, Diva Hero, Hero, I think, Bayou Turbo, and Black Wings. I don't know, mate. I don't know. Where's that boy? I'm trying to hop in that game. How's your guys' mo morning going? You guys having a good morning? <laughs> you guys having a good time? There he is. There's that boy. You'll be back when your Adderall crash is done. Jesus Christ. I hope that's prescription, brother. Miracle Fusion decks versus Vayu Sirocco decks. Who would have thought? Oh. Uh -huh. I mean. They got there. We were close to having a Valhalla deck. He just got unlucky with his opponent's wins. He needed Raunuk to clutch. Raunuk is the reason we're not seeing Valhalla in top 8. Just want you guys to know that, by the way. <laughs> really bad ADHD. I feel for you. But also, I value your unique and beautiful perspective, Bluff Not. You're in Eugene, Oregon, and you get snow the last couple days. Weird way to start a match. That is weird. Eugene, Oregon is gorgeous, by the way. That is one of my favorite places on the planet that I've been to. Is one of the most beautiful. Not the morning here, but very good. Well, I'm glad your day is good, Ramon. Okay, we got we got the starts. We got the Greffer banished. We got the Treeborn Duplock action. Uh, Televisual is on, I believe, Diva Hero. Electing not to commit into Monarchs. We're going to go swing, swing here. 
possibly proccing a gores. Hmm. I watched Dune last night, and it was fucking incredible. It was really, really, really good. Highly recommend. That movie was based. All right, soft lock. Okay, interesting. Wonder why he would go for the soft lock instead of the hard lock. Special evil guy. That quarterfinals was based. There were some good matches. Kai's attacks the substitute. Okay, 2300 damage. Tethius buyout win. If it had gotten top 8, I guarantee you that card would be nowhere to be found. Like, if you didn't already have your Tethiuses and that got top 8, the fact that it got 9th, there are so many times when a deck gets 9th and it, like, it just flies under the radar. And the only difference was just, like, tiebreakers. It's crazy. Like, the Gemini deck has gotten 9th a couple of times, and if it just got 8th instead of 9th on tiebreakers, then <laughs> more people would respect it. But because it's never topped anything because it's gotten 9th a couple of times, it's like, oh. Well, it's not real you know people just i don't know people need to see something get into the top eight like for some reason top eight is what like demands the most respect how did zombies do today very good it was undefeated in swiss so zombies did well um instant zombies i should add instant zombies were undefeated in swiss lost in top eight there's mirror force um but a very diverse and very cool top eight. A lot of frogs. A lot more frogs than I expected. How many total entrants? 208 total entrants. There were 362 zombie lists as well, yes. There were a lot of oh, there were a lot of zombie lists that didn't quite cut it. You wish this secret rare dark creators would dip a little more in price? Mm, maybe a speed duel secret could go hard. Instant zombies undefeated, let's go. Yeah, I was pretty hype actually. I love that deck. Junk Synchron, targeting Schwab Frog. You saved Edison. Facts. Okay, Torrential. Pretty good Torrential, kind of. I don't know, it's just traded one for one. You honestly could have let whatever Synchro happen. I guess maybe not, you don't want to take the damage. Oh, that's so tough. <laughs> Frug. Frug. Yeah, hella frogs. Heavy storm, okay. Getting value against frogs with heavy storm is always a vibe. Another OTS, another missed chance for hollow substitute. I'm saying, dog. Well, he dad dies, so it's his always can live. Dead ass. And he based his fuck decks do well. I think Valhalla is based and it got ninth. I think a lot of the decks in top 8 were based. Ralnix, like, hella light and darkness dragon deck. That deck is based. Oh, shit. Gravekeeper Spy. Oh, you guys weren't ready for that. Although I've been talking about him playing it the entire stream. <laughs> um, but yes, he plays Gravekeeper Spies in his uh, Diva Hero deck. Which is something I have done to very little success. So I'm surprised he's making it work, but let him cook. So the upsides of Gravekeeper Spy is... The matchups that are kind of bad with Diva Hero is Black Wings, and it also like just hard stops Hero Beat. So it does really well in those two matchups. And then also sometimes, you know, you don't have enough darks to promote Dark Arm Dragon or to uh, support Dark Arm Dragon. But Gravekeeper Spy is two of the darks on its own. And then if you even have one Caius, that's three darks for Dark Arm Dragon. So it's a much easier way to set up for Dark Arm Dragon. And there's a big trap dust shoot. Okay, so this is a big turn. He elected not to attack not attack not to attack into gores. Oh, shout out Diego for showing the stream. Real one. Fucking real one. Double miracle. Oh fucking shit, dude. You hate to see it. You hate to see it off dust shoot. You're like, yeah, I guess I'll take dupe frog. Or whatever the fuck. Probably would have taken dupe frog, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, hate to see it. That is tough. Brain control, double miracle. Oh my god, man, that's nasty. 
That's nasty. That's why you play Frog Hero, because you just draw double miracle brain control. Where's Fraser Smith? Tell me all I say is double miracle. Well, what's on the screen, Fraser? What's on the screen? We got double miracle. <sighs> Only the real ones know about double miracle. Hero Frog can be so ignorant. I mean. <laughs> what game is this? Game one? I mean. <laughs> I mean, let's see which trap cards are gone. Oh, the important ones? I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, what's there to think about now? I mean, like, he's scared of fucking main deck needle ceiling? Could be on the table. He does play spy. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, there's that boy. You know him, you know him well. Recently reprinted, beautiful secret rare, absolute zero. E-call for Stratos, Stratos effect to pop. Not going to pay the life points because you can't afford to, but you're just done. You're just done. Damn, that was wild. That was, that was disgusting. He had the e-call too, so he couldn't even dust shoot the Stratos. Fucking gross. That's one of the biggest strengths of heroes is like how resilient it is to bullshit dust shoot. I'll say it. I'll be the brave one to say it. If heroes are good, then that means dust shoot is bad, and I'm okay with that. You ordered a set of secret absolute zero gonna be crispy. Oh, let's go, Midnight Prophets. They look clean and they're like they're kinda cheap, aren't they? A watch says peanut drawn insane alternament. Good players get rewarded though. Facts, facts. Not always, but mostly. I'll say mostly, yeah. Mostly good players get rewarded. Okay, we've got Black Wings, Vayu, Frog, and Diva Hero with Spies in top four. Which is pretty cool. Four different decks. Four potential outcomes. All right, six cards in hand, five cards in hand. Diego taking off his belt all tourney. He had too much tacos. He needs to loosen the pants, the waistline. No, I'm just kidding. Very nice seeing absolute zeros all tank after the secret re reprint. It is nice. I need to pick up a third one. I only own two. But I also never play hero decks and don't own Miracle Fusion, so I don't really care. <laughs> so I'm just like, all right. <laughs> I can tell you for a fact that we are getting a max rarity Valhalla deck profile in the works. I'm working with a couple people because we all collectively have one version of the Valhalla secret rare, like crazy max rarity deck. Tacos? How am I racist? What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> the haters. They're out. They're always out. It be it be your it, it be your close friends too. It be your homies. That's my favorite deck lately. I've been very impressed with Quick Draw Dandelion. And I've also been very impressed with Times 2's Light Sworn deck. Those have been very cool. I always enjoy Welly Dad, and I always enjoy Fairies. I'm excited to try the ninth place Valhalla Fairy deck. That's going to be very sweet. I think Galaxia cooked his goddamn mind out on that list. It looks so clean. Diego, his name's Pina, 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 Pina. Bruh. Keegan keeps the hater blockers equipped. I do, in Rage Peacock. I have to, man. It's Yu-Gi-Oh. Everyone's such a hater. It's insane. Like, people really want to watch you lose. When in reality, if I win, everyone who enjoys Edison format wins. It's like... <laughs> oh, that's such a nuts feeling. He's going to Stratos search Stratos. Oh, gross. 
Stratos Surge Stratos. That should be on the bingo card. That is... That is so gross. That's some, like, fucking custom Yu-Gi-Oh! format shit. That's so nasty. That's some cube shit, you know? Dude. Your favorite deck is Twilight. You don't know if it'll ever win anything. Not with that attitude. All you gotta do is run hotter than the sun, brother. Fucking load that bitch up and enter an RBET. Twilight's a pretty good deck. We back in Airblade format, boys. We so back. Me, I don't need another deck. Also me, looking at my TCG player cart that has $500 worth of cards I will never use in it. <laughs> yes, Tethius Fairies, let's go. Dude, the Tethius deck is so gas. You thought about taking it to Maryland? Fucking do it, that'd be sick. Friend of yours plays Twilight with Chaos Necromancer. What does that card do, chat? I know there's a card guy in chat who knows what Chaos Necromancer is. What does it do? Big miracle. And by big miracle, I mean big minus. But kind of necessary. You are getting beat to death by the Squeal Guardian. Plus 300 attack for every monster in Grave. That's what Chaos Necromancer does. Okay. Hmm. Let him cook. Chaos Necromancer. That's kind of good. Essentially a 3k normal summon every time it comes down. Well, you would need 10 monsters in Grave, but that's pretty reasonable in Twilight. How often would you guys say you get 10 monsters in Grave playing Light's Horns? Every game? Some of the games? Most of the games? None of the games? Any of the games? Is Tethius Fairy still in? My brother, I got bad news for you. He got ninth place, Sag. But it was a close game. He could have, I think he could have won it. I think he had to be a little bit more patient on his Solemn, but he had a fuck it, we ball mentality uh, regarding the Icarus attack. And he saw red a little bit. And I, would, I don't blame him. I would have made the same exact play, but it's not the correct play for sure. Is a level in Fiend. One for one target? People, Pog, let him cook. Okay. One for one for a 3k beater on some Skull Servant shit. Dude, it's literally just King of the Skull Servants, but good. Hold the fuck up. I actually want to play that. Sag. I know, I know, Sag, but there are more RBTs. I think it will clutch. This is the most free Stratos you've ever seen. It is. Truly is. Main phase one. Sack for Caius. There he is. Boys. Caius the Shadow Monarch targeting the set monster. Now these guys are competing for a very real prize. The prize pool is based off of donations. And all of the stream revenue is going towards this prize pool as well. So if you guys want to contribute to their prize pool, um, there's a donation link in the description below. And um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, looks like Diego's going to move on to the finals televisual with a cool list i just think it struggled a little bit with frogs the gravekeeper spy gravekeepers descendant package is nice but um mostly i'm just i'm just shocked that he's playing a deck with mali descendant and gilman and he made it all the way to top four so congratulations to televisual for earning his invite and an impressive run with a very cool and unique list with some cool tech so good shit uh, let's hop into the other top four game, which is going to be Twilight versus Back to the Bando. Let's see what they're cooking. Looks like this is game one, huh? Game one. And it looks like Back to the Bando's gonna take it. Interdasting. If you draw one brick, you don't draw the other. Pemdas, genius IQ. <laughs> God damn it, Vin. Vin, don't you don't you have some guy's face to be punching? When's when's your match? When's your match? I, I want to see the way in. You better post a picture in the Discord. I want to see. We have to start playing more bricks. Yes. 
Yes, the answer is not less. It's more. More is less. I like your mentality. More is less, especially when it comes to bricks. Genius. Giga Chad. <laughs> more is less. I like that mentality. You fight in four hours. You wait in a couple hours. Go, okay. Okay, based. Based. Got some fucking athletes in the chat. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, Vin, you're, you're fucking out here, dude. <laughs> Imagine your opponent just misses weight again. <laughs> like three rounds in a row. <laughs> three in a row. <laughs> Bro's just trying to fight. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so it looks like we got ourselves a match, ladies and gentlemen. The more bricks you pray, play, the less you'll draw them. Facts. I don't make the rules. He's spitting. Three titanials, I never draw it. One titanial, it's always in my fucking hand. That's just the way it goes. Okay. That's a lot of back row. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have Heavy Storm, are you playing it here? Tell me. Tell me. If you have Heavy Storm, are you playing it here? And if you don't have Heavy Storm, how do you navigate this situation with Black Wings? Because this is like... This is easily the most frustrating situation to navigate with Black Wings. Someone says, hell nah. I mean, this is game two, right? They could have sided in Starlight Road. You don't know. You don't know. I don't know. You don't know. We don't know. We kind of know, but we don't know. Um, yeah. I'll do my best. Okay. I respect the sportsmanship here. I respect the, the question and the sportsmanship. All right. Well, I guess we know the answer. All right, there it is. There it is. There it is, chat. And on that note, on that note, I will be taking a moment to uh, use the restroom. Enjoy this. Enjoy this uh, Stardust Dragon moment. Everybody who said they would... Who said it? Who said it? Yes, because you also have Dark Core in hand. Interesting. Joseph said yes. Okay. Jared said free 4K. Doesn't look that free for me. End phase dusties. You said it because you're not actually playing it. True. Here's the thing, though. If you hold the storm and they hold the road, you just trade one for one, and that's not ideal. Or is it? Hmm? You ever think about that? I gotta pee. I'll be right back. I've returned. I've returned. Keegan peeing loud as fuck. Big dick energy. Well, I'm not saying you're wrong, but weird. Um, Gale runs over the Stardust for Freech. 
Okay, lots of dust tornadoes and space typhoons. He sniped double D prison. But he got the Stardust for free, which is, you know, it's about as good as you can ask for. That boy frying chicken for sure. Dude, I love fried chicken. That might be like my favorite comfort food. There's this place here in Vegas that has the most insane fried chicken. It's so good. Actually, there's a couple places in Vegas that have really good fried chicken. Watch Demon's other car be oppression. Here's the thing, though. Oh, I gotta update the stream title, right? We don't have it. So we have Bandovers. OG. Is it OG99? Why everyone got six different usernames? Anyway. um, What were we talking about? We were talking about something. Oppression in versus Black Wings is wild. That place in the Venetian has grape fried chicken. Ugh, pardon me. Lost my voice a little bit from the stream yesterday. It's actually really hard on your voice to talk for eight hours uninterrupted. So unsurprising. Ooh, snowman here. Interesting. Pops the gale. Let's see an Icarus attack. So you have double road. That'd be fucking nuts. No Icarus. Okay. And no Dark Illusion. Dark Illusion, kind of an MVP in this matchup. I know some players swear by it, but... Uh... OG99 really picking up the card advantage here. He's now up six cards to three. Although some of his cards are like pretty shitty. Like it's like fucking super nimble. <laughs> and snowman eater, so. What is the place in the Venetian called? I'm actually curious, Izzy. I haven't been to the Venetian in a minute. It's because I grew up here. And then I moved away and then I moved back. But I think the last time I went to the Venetian was prom. <laughs> I wasn't, it wasn't even my prom. It was my date's prom. I was like a freshman and she was like a senior. And we went to the Venetian and we went on one of those gondolas and it was fucking lit. And I was just a little boy and I was just vibing and I was just chilling and she was chilling. And then we went to this restaurant that was pretty cool. It was like Wolfgang Pucks or something. That was the last time I went to the Venetian. And I was just like, all right, this is lit. And then I was like, I'm 13 years old. <laughs> the Gravekeeper. Yes, I'm truly the embodiment. I don't even think I went to my own prom. Because by that point, I was like... I think the girl I was dating was in, like, college. Or some shit. But I went to prom. That's all that matters. Yardbird. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that place sounds... That place seems pretty bomb. Reeskin. <laughs> I don't know if that works, <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> yeah. We could do like a dating app stream on the other channel, but definitely can't do it on this one. Because half of my audience has like children and wives, and I don't want to be responsible for someone I don't know, cheating or whatever. Mark Shatra says one prom's enough. Agreed. As a man, <laughs> one prom is more than enough. I don't even remember what songs they played at my prom. It was just... Or not my prom. Again, it wasn't my prom. Uh, Raiko targeting back row. Do we have a chainable? Do we have a chainable? We do! Legacy of Yadagrasu. So, a little bit of card advantage. There's going to be a mill three here, though. Oh, my gosh. We've seen this mill twice now from OG99. It's the OG99 Classic. He flipped three darks. Two of them are good. Broken. I feel like playing Vayu Turbo is just playing Light Swarm with extra steps. If I wanted to mill Necrogarden a Vayu, just give me a wolf instead of the Vayu, brother. <laughs> like, I would rent myself to prom. I don't think I was that business-minded. And Oh, that's a nice Icarus there, actually. That was pretty good. You know what? All things considered, back to the bandos walking away kind of like a bandit here, I would say. A bando, if you will. He's he's kinda he kinda got all of the right interaction points. And he's back in it. He's back in it to win it. He brought enough alcohol for like twenty people and only four showed up to the prom after party. I don't think I drank alcohol till I was eighteen. We were too broke. <laughs> we were like 
Like, if we had money, we, like, we would buy video games. Which, in hindsight, is based. Okay, that's 4K. That's pretty big pressure. Bando is going to steal this game. I don't know if he's going to steal this game. There's still that Necrogarna down there. He's got. He's under a lot of pressure. His life total is pretty low. Stop the cap. No, I literally didn't drink it until I was 18. I remember the first time I drank. I was like, damn, this is shit. <laughs> but I'm here to party. <laughs> like, so fucking get it twisted. I also would like to say that I have significantly slowed my alcohol intake this year. I've only drank twice this year so far in 2024, which is pretty good, I would like to say. And the second time was literally just a beer at dinner with Swagger. Blame Swagger. It's his fault. Just kidding. <laughs> That's insanely impressive. Yeah, I've just been on my grind set, you know? I've been kind of walk-pilled. I've been... um. I've been going for a walk every day. So when did I start smoking? That's hilarious. This is an insane blizzard. I mean, this is why you play Black Wings, because blizzard is fucking crazy. And you have to necro this, right? I guess maybe you don't. Yeah, I used to smoke cigarettes when I was younger. But I kind of, like, I never really got into it outside of, like, the parties. So I stopped just because, I don't know, it's just not something I want to do. Missed out on the find a guy's older brother's friend's ex-girlfriend's cousin who is willing to turn you and your boyfriend's loose change into the shittiest bottles of vodka as legal to produce experience. <laughs> I know that all too well, surprisingly. 18 to 20 was a lot of that. <laughs> Back row is a big deal. Nice, Keegan. Thank you, Ramon. Yeah, I would like to cut out alcohol altogether as well. But I'm a big, like, occasion alcohol. Like, at a wedding, I want to have a glass of champagne. Just because I feel like it's wrong not to. Because everyone else is doing it. Oh, Dust Tornado. Okay. You were a DD that day too? I mean, I had a beer, man. <laughs> With like a full dinner. I was not like drinking like that. Glad to know you're still here, Swagger. <laughs> I'm a healthy human. Yeah, I try to be. I think like taking care of your body is like more important than anything else. But I also like kind of eat like shit sometimes I definitely don't eat enough vegetables Bando's been clawing this one back I mean he he was down like six cards to three earlier and now he's up alcohol in USA feels so serious people here drink since like 13 14 I'm assuming you're from Italy Luciano who does eat enough vegetables it's really hard like i feel like americans don't make like vegetables that available like you go to a restaurant like you don't have a lot of great vegetable options they're usually like an afterthought or like something you order if you're like not hungry oh you're from argentina oh yeah that's interesting what's what's drinking like in argentina like is it um like what is like the alcohol of choice usually i'm, I'm curious i don't know much about argentina I heard it's beautiful, though. I have a couple friends from there. But I just don't know much about it. Restaurants never have good vegetables. Yeah, fortunately. Sometimes they do. If you go to, like, specifically a, re a veg vegetable restaurant or whatever. I'm, like, low-key farmer's market pilled. All right. Um, you got to make a play, bro. I'm gonna message him. Oh. Can you pick up the pace a bit? Um. Give him a little bit of a countdown. Okay, 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 okay. I, 
I counted to five and he made an action. I counted to five and he made an action. All right. Here in Germany, drinking wine and beer is legal at 16. He did have the D prison. Tough. So there goes the Goyo. I think beer is like, whatever. The beer in America is really unhealthy. Second hamster. And he still has a Ryko in deck. Actually, he has two Rykos in deck. Hmm. Farmer's market are so based. Freshest for the freshest food and meals at a decent price. I agree. The food is very good. Sour beers, best beers. I am very beer pilled, but I gotta focus on my health. Put me on some veggie game. Get a roasting pan. Fill it with broccoli, baby carrots, drizzle oil of choice, paprika, garlic, salt, black pepper, and if you need some kick, cayenne peps. I think we might be going to game three here. That sounds good. Yeah, just like all about the seasoning. Yeah, that sounds good. I think seasoning can go a long way at like just making your fundamentals really palatable. Your friend makes dark chocolate Guinness cookies? Sounds pretty good. When you bake with it, it's pretty interesting. Baking with beer, it like adds a nice flavor to things. We used to sometimes we would like cook, we would like um, use beer to cook like certain meats. We would cook it in beer. That people in Argentina drink a lot of alcohol, but after starting meeting more people my age, I realized it was just you and your friends. That's funny. Okay, we going ham. We going ham for the game. You have to stop this hamster, and you can't. All right. Beer brats are insanely goaded. Yeah, that is something I remember making. The problem with restaurant vegetables is that to make them taste nice, they're smothered in butter, which sort of defeats the purpose of adding a healthy side. Facts. Jonathan says, gotta get wine and cheese pilled. I think for the social factor, wine and cheese is based, and you'll definitely meet a lot of women that way. But for the sake of the splitting headache that I know I will have if I drink wine, um, kind of off it. <laughs> I'll just get some uh, sparkling cider or something. That was a pretty good game. A lot of back and forth there. Man, I love watching Black Wings. I, I don't play Black Wings that often on the channel, but it's like undoubtedly one of my favorite decks. Um, just because not a lot of people watch it. Which is surprising because the deck is so fun. It's just so cool and so fun and so timeless. Um, and you, you have like so many ways to like come back which i think is hype i think decks that have comeback plays like blizzard or debris dragon or jd or whatever awesome i love comeback plays comeback plays make for the best formats totally by far when the deck that's good just has a bunch of comeback plays that's good that's that's how you know jay Ferdash says boo alcohol i'm i'm in that vibe bro i'm in that vibe i'm i'm there with you it's not for me. I'm I'm Middle Eastern, so my body doesn't handle it very well. Black Wings when it doesn't roll a broken start is interesting. Yeah, like that game was really back and forth. It was really intriguing. And there were lots of points of interaction. And remember it all started with him like getting his heavy storm starlight roaded and he was still able to like pull back almost entirely. Can you do a ladder climb side deck pattern for, with Black Wings for members and I'll join ASAP? I was thinking about doing a members only ladder climb. Um, but I would have to one deck it and I'm not sure if there's a deck that I want to one deck yet. But if I was going to one deck it, I'd either be fairies or Black Wings as of right now. Have you ever drank mead? Yes, I have. Didn't really do it for me. Card Trooper, one of the best starters. I actually think that Card Trooper against Black Wings is something you want to side, side out. But he is going to hit a plague, which is something. It's better. It's not as good as like the other three things he could hit, but it's, it is something. Uh, I generally think siding out. Does he have the road? Double legacy? Just. Yeah, double legacy. Okay, that makes sense. So whoever was asking about legacy earlier, this is why you play it. You like force heavy storm, and then you get to draw two cards. 
deck dev. Interesting. He was trying to set up for some some stuff there. So I don't like Card Trooper so much left in in this matchup because um, Card Trooper is sure of food. He'll literally pay me for the Blackwing video. Love my insight. I'll pre I appreciate that, Silent Bandit. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it. You know what? You convince me. I'll do a I'll do a ladder climb video for members only. So if you're a member, have I seen the GB list with test tape and hero signal? I've seen similar lists. Henry is go Henny is go to liquor choice. <laughs> Say less. All right, card trooper's gonna draw so. No Shura, but Vayu's going to connect. I wonder if Bando's playing Greffer. We didn't see it, right? I think he's just on, like, pure Black Wings with Legacies. I do like Legacy Oliviata Grasu. It's such a fucking awesome card to draw in your opening hand. You're like, yes! I think in Edison format, drawing Legacy, it makes me happy every single time if it's turn one. The only time it's bad is, like, later, when I'm just like, I need something live, and I draw the Legacy, and I'm like, fuck. All right, set three more, and the heavy storm is gone now, so come at me, bro. Wish it wasn't $50. Legacy of Yada Grasu is $50? You're capping. Isn't it common and super and secret rare? Armageddon Knight sends. Secrets are, oh, well, I mean, if you want the fucking max rarity... Then yes. But $50 even for max rarity is like not that bad. Whoa, he's sending Necrogarna. Does that mean he doesn't have an attack stop? He just let the Vayu die. Wow. No Icarus, no anything. Interesting. If he just has a spa removal spell here though, like using the Icarus would have been good. Why Legacy over Jar of Greed? Because it's strictly better i don't know if you understand the concept of strictly better but legacy is strictly better because it's the same thing but more so there's a the bottomless and here's chain deck dev and that's that's pretty good deck dev i'm not gonna lie that's better than an icarus would have been here second deck dev connecting the valhalla fairies all secret rare not all first dead though Plus the ulti heralds. Oh, you have ulti heralds. Those are clean. Pops the Armageddon Knight. No hits in the hand. Wow. No hits in the hand. That means it's all bangers upstairs. He has Vayu in Grave too. Yeah, that's pretty good. He's cooking. He's actually cooking. Now, he could get crazy with it, but he knows his opponent's hand. So, how crazy with it does he want to get? You guys tell me. On a scale of 1 to how crazy with it he wants to get. You tell me. The blue glow is peak. I have them and I don't know what blue... Are you talking about on the gemstone? I gotta take a look at them again. I haven't looked at them in a while. It's funny, I have the secrets and I play with the commons. That I'm I'm one of those. The worst type of player. They're gonna go to time soon, right? I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't have the round timer up. Sevilla is in the chat though, so we're good. Can I hit for twenty three? He's gonna let that connect. It's pretty important damage. So this is Deck Devastation Term 1. Return is revealed. So that could bring back Plague or Necrogardena for like maybe an impromptu like level 5 synchro kind of vibe. There's a brain control. We kind of knew about this. He could Solemn this. He knows the hand, so. Every day you're sad that Neo Parshath is in a level 8. Card's still busted. You don't have to play it though. You could play like I'm really excited to see the new list. I think the new Valhalla list is really cool. I think 
Galaxia really cooked with it. Okay, tax for 23s. Stack for Plague, most likely, because you don't want to be... Oh, interesting. Hmm. Huh. He knew about the Caius, and he didn't deprison the Armed Wing. What? Wouldn't you... I guess he can stack for Plague and stack for Caius either way. Okay. Interesting. I guess that makes sense. Maybe this last back row is really important to the, to the dub. All right, Plague Spreader activation. <clears throat> That's gonna resolve. And so he's stacking, and the stack is also gonna be useful here to make sure he doesn't have to discard to deck debt. Return is gonna be live next turn. Here comes Starbucks Dragon. Does he have a negate for this? Probably should use it if he has one. If not, well, you know how it is. He's maybe saving Shalom for the return. I don't fucking know. Start a set return, set the other card that we don't know. Or it could not be returned. He could have stacked the return, but I highly doubt that. Huh. Well, this is a tough situation, man. I just got Stardust, a couple back row. One of them is a looming return, and he's got the Necrogardena. So even though you have technical card advantage, um, positionally, you're, you're really far behind here. I'm really curious as to what his back row was that he thought about there. You wish they would print an ultimate Armageddon Knight? Damien, there's a collector's rare one in the OCG, and it looks very nice. So if you want something that's like about as close as it's going to get, check that one out. Do they have an ulti as well, Damien? I don't know if they have an ulti, but... I know they have a collector's rare. Honestly, I for us should just have legal OCG cards. Because it's not like... Like, we all know what these do, you know? Bayou Turbo has this locked? I think so, too. I think this is... We're about to go into time. The Vayu player has the higher life total. He has Necrogardna. And as long as he doesn't activate that return and punt this in time, then he's fine. So here comes normal Sirocco. Attack Starbucks Dragon. Necrogardna. If you activate Necrogardna here, I don't know why you wouldn't. How do you keep your supers from warping? SoCal humidity kills you. It's tough, man. It's tough out here. I wish I knew. Okay, Necrovat Gardener activate. Seems like the players are experiencing a little bit of lag. All right. There's his two. Now what? And before Kaluta's bluff? It absolutely was a bluff. Wasn't it? Oh, I guess they have five minutes left. They're chilling. Let me check the round timer to make sure, though. Double check on that. No, this is time in the round now, I think. Unless they got an extension. Um, this should be time in the round now. Amos says, I need a judge. Um, okay, go call the judge. Okay. To verify how much time is left. Check server for a judge call. I believe this is time in the round. 
They were both playing pretty slow, but not slow enough to like issue a warning. It was like very methodical, but just like too methodical too often. But um, this game could have been sped up for sure. Um, it says convenient to ask now. What's convenient about it? He just wants to know how much time is left. The judge can give an extension if there was one. I believe time was called. Time was called after or before he said he needed a judge. Time was called before he said he needed a judge. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think either of these players were slow playing. They were just playing very methodically. So the match is over. I'm gonna let the judges handle this one. They are going to handle this. All right. Jace is not like this. I mean... You gotta play at a reasonable pace. I mean, that's part of competing. That's just part of the game. It does suck though. Um, time happened before. Time happened before all. Of, like time happened like when he was activating Agrigar. I think it was at forty-five minutes. He wouldn't have had to activate the return no matter what. And even and even if he had a judge call, they would give him an extension if it went in, if it went over time. So it's not like he's it's not like he's wasting time that won't get they won't get back. Um, the judge will give them an extension uh, with regards to the judge call if the call had happened um, at a certain point or whatever. No, don't play the game. The judges asked you to stop. The judges asked them to stop the game. This is time in the round. Please check Discord for the judge ruling. Thoughts on Diva Hero? I think it's a great deck. Petrukis said, you think the Blackwing player shouldn't have sided deck dev? I think it's pretty good. It can line up well against the Ryko draws. No, this is not how it works, back to the Bando. He can't... He doesn't just play it now. The judge asked him to stop, so he waits until the judge gives the ruling. Um, judges need a ruling on this game. Bando's ignoring my DM, so um, match time was called a little while ago. Player needs judge. Time was called before it got to this point. Yeah, it was. Time was called um, on like the Necro Gardener activation. This is frustrating. This is why I prefer double elimination with no time control, but alas, it's all the same. Aren't you giving four turns? No. We're doing the end of phase policy. We're doing end-of-phase policy because it emulates IRL tournaments, and so I want it to be the same policy across all of our, all of the RBETs. It used to be back in the good old days. And that's the rules. Everyone knew it going into the tournament. Exactly. It was announced. Is it like current time rules? It's exactly like current time rules. This was part of the announcement going into the tournament. 
Why? Because that's the tournament policy. In watcher's chat, judges providing final call. Uh, there was a slow play warning. Time is called on the Discord. Please check there. Both of these guys are judges. Um, time was called, meaning please go to end of phase where the last action happen happened. Whoever has life point, higher life points wins this game. So they've called. Patrika says you hate slow players. Neither of these players were slow playing. I want to be very, very clear. He says, can't lie, I lost some respect for you for that. He didn't do anything wrong. He just played the game at the same pace that he'd been playing it. And the same goes for you. Both of these players played totally normally. They just didn't play quick enough. Uh, Bando is upset, and that's understandable. I mean, losing in a top four situation is upset. And he did ask him to speed up, and he said he would try. And you know what? That's just that's just what happened. I don't think Bando's necessarily acting like a baby. He's saying he's being very respectful. He says GG. He says good luck next. He's saying I'm frustrated. He's ex expressing his frustration, and I think that that's all we need to see here. I don't think we need to like dogpile on him or anything. I think that that's like, you know what? Next time, just play at a more reasonable pace and. And that's it, you know? It's it, You live and you learn. It's not that serious. It's a fucking free tournament on Dueling Book. Like, <laughs> yeah, Neither of them were, like, doing anything crazy or out of the ordinary. Um, and I don't think either of them were, were slow playing. Um, they had been asked by the judges to pick up the paces. I almost gave a slow play warning myself. Um, and, yeah, that's just a moment where it's, like, play faster, to be honest. And that game could have ended in either person's favor. Um but we're going to hop into the finals, and it's going to be uh, finals time, which is Diego versus Damon. Bando was asked to pick up the pace multiple times. He can't be mad. He ran out of time. I agree. I agree that neither player has the right to be upset about that match. Patrika says, do you think both were slow playing? I don't think that. I think at this high level of tournament, I think both of those players were playing at a reasonable... Like they were being very methodical. They were thinking through their plays. But I don't think that they were... Um, I don't think they were, like, not... I don't think they were slow playing. They were, like, just being very methodical. And maybe they needed to get a little bit more aggressive with their time control. They were trying to read each other. Yeah, I, I don't think that that's... Def that's definitely not an instance of, like intentional or malicious slow play at all um yes we are gonna hop into the final so very nice we got the nice dueling book glitch to start off the game classic as is the case with every finals who you got diego or damon damon day day diamond who you got chat we got Frog Hero versus Vayu Turbo, an Edison format classic. Oh, pretty close on the polls. Jay says blue balls, bro. Who would have won? Well, we know who won, so that's what matters. Will this be Hero's first win? Uh, Hero Frogs? No, Hero Frogs has won before. There are other hero variants that haven't won tournaments yet, but this hero frog variant has won tournaments before. I would give a slight matchup edge to Diego, but we know he's got that sauce for frogs in the sideboard. He sauced up Roundnook earlier, I think. Damon, he had the sauce for Roundnook, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. If Turbo wins, can you stop capping like Vayu isn't the best deck? It's not, <laughs> Crippled Thumbs. It's just straight up not. Bro is huffing that Vayu Turbo copium. It's like, it's a consistent and good deck. I will, I will say that because that's what it is. It's a consistent and good deck. But it's not like 
it's definitely not the best deck in Edison format by far. Final time. Final time. Is it finals? Did I not write that? Oh, I did write that. What's this obsession with declaring the best deck? It's just a fun discourse. It's kind of like who's the goat in sports. You know? Have you ever like have you ever gotten sucked into a a debate where it's like who's the basketball goat or something like that? It's just a fun discussion. Jago's kind of cooking here though. No royal oppression means he's going full dupe. There's torrential. Okay, he can then choose to send. He's gonna pop the dark refer. That's a pretty good torrential though, because he's still got the value resource engrave. Wait, what happened to your message, Izzy? Why did it get retracted? What the fuck? Did your message get auto deleted? Tethius wins the whole tournament, if you ask me. I think Tethius could have cooked this whole tournament, Loki. It's very frustrating to see the game end this way. I don't know. I've seen more frustrating games. What is the best deck? There just isn't one, Kyle. As much as you want there to be one, there isn't one. Just like there isn't a goat of basketball. Just like there isn't, like... Like... Every deck has like strengths and weaknesses, and every deck is like good in different metas. Big Caius. Caius banished the armed wing. Yeah, best deck is a phrase that only exists within the context of hindsight and within the context of a certain event. I've, I've fucking talked about this so many times on streams. Basically, there's no such thing as a best deck, because if there was a best deck, it would win every event. Crippled Thumbs says best deck is Vayu Turbo. I think your Crippled Thumbs might have spelled Vayu Turbo wrong. I think you may have typed the wrong deck. If a Vayu Synchro is destroyed by Goyo, does it get the effects back? Well, you can't take a Synchro that, with Goyo that's a Vayu Synchro because it wasn't properly Synchro Summoned, so it can't be Special Summoned from the Graveyard. So you can't take it to begin with. The best deck is the community we build along the way, based. Watch Vayu win and see the cope in chat. If Vayu loses, the Vayu Turbo players will still say the same thing. <laughs> He's got that main deck, Gores, on deck, though. I mean, he drew the two nut cards versus frogs, which is Gores and Torrential. Oh, you do have the best decks built, Brandon. Legendary. T set pass. Do you have another Caius? Unifrog's not bad. Swole Tommy Pickles is back. Pops return. Okay, that's a great pop actually. Cause that would have been a crazy return. Don't sleep on dragons. Yeah, never sleep on dragons. Why you cultists can believe whatever they like? That's hilarious. Mill three with the Ryko hits double Caius Heavy Storm. So pretty good mill uh, hitting the Heavy Storm, but hitting double Caius is a little silly. Um, but yeah, hitting Heavy Storm in the Frog matchup is nice because you, you definitely don't want to draw this card versus Frogs. So it's good that it's just out of the deck. It's like a brick that's out of your deck, basically. Alright, Vayu attacks over the Unifrog. And Raiko can attack directly, but does he want to proc Gores or is he scared? He doesn't want to proc Gores, so that means he can't out Gores currently. What game is this? This is game one. Currently game one. Definitely have to respect Vayu in deck building. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You just play good cards and you can beat Vayu Turbo pretty easily. 
I don't think Value Turbo is a deck you have to like tech specific things for. Like your generic shit will be good enough to beat Value Turbo. We all know Glad Beast is the best deck. See, maybe we don't know what the best deck is, but we know what the best deck isn't. All right, <laughs> we know which deck definitely isn't the best, and it's Glad's. Glad Enjoyers BTFO destroyed. On all accounts, eviscerated. Specials Blackwing Gale have the alias. Pretty big, pretty big moves. Oh, he's not scared of Honest. He's not scared of Honest. Imagine he had Honest there. Oh my gosh. Imagine, imagine he had the tech one of Honest. Oh my gosh. What if he had the tech one of Honest? What if he had it? Glad's had their time. Okay, so there's a there's an effect armor master one Caius here still brings it all the way back though, one Caius one Ryza also. I don't know how many monarchs Diego's playing, but he's only seen one. He's thinking here, which means he doesn't have a windmill slam monarch. Although, if he did, I'll never make a glad video again. I think this top eight was pretty good. I think this tournament was pretty good in general. There was a lot of really cool shit happening. I think people are cooking. With facts and logic. Oh man. You won locals like two years in a row back in the day with Glads. Does that mean all my local players were trash and your deck wasn't good? Yes. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's exactly what it means. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> Mighty Turbo is the deck that loses to the least things. But it also loses to the most things. You feel me? Like, you can just kind of outgrind it. Like, you can do an unfair thing, and it will outclass whatever Mighty Turbo is doing, usually. It's like, it's the most fair deck that, like, tops and wins and stuff. I think every other deck that like tops and wins is like really, really unfair. Okay, he's gonna use Necrogarden to protect the Vayu, but how are you converting that Vayu is a real question. Because that Vayu, you know, like normally the only conversion is Kaya's. He might have wanted to let that Vayu die. Although, I, I don't know. If he plays three Kaya's, he might be able to convert. Maybe Sirocco? No, that doesn't work. Hmm. Dad burial is super fair. It's super fair when you don't have the nuts. Okay, he's got Goyo take the Bionic. Okay. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a top deck situation. All we need is a Caius to Shadow Monarch. Got a Black Rose quick draw. Got second. And of course, Oscar won again with Diva Hero. Dude, Oscar's so cracked, Ulysses. How does he keep doing it? You guys gotta stop him, man. He's won five PS5s. <laughs> that bro has a PS5 in every room. <laughs> How, you guys gotta relax. You gotta, you gotta stop feeding, bro. He, that guy's really good. I don't know how he is consistently. He also got, I think he got second place at RB Team Moreno Valley, right? He's, he's really cracked. Monarch. I want to see a fucking game, baby. Monarch. Okay, never mind. Never mind, it's over. It's Jover. It's Jover, everyone. Look away. We're going game two. If you're frogs and you lose game one, that's really tough. Bounce the treeborn. Bounce the treeborn to no balls. Oh my god. Oh my god. He smashed that battle phase. Brother, you have lethal. He missed lethal. Oh my god. God, he missed lethal. Chat, are you kidding me? Oh my god, he missed lethal. Did he, did he, oh my, if he comes back after this, I am going to fucking, oh my god, he has the comeback play. Oh my god. Punt into the sun. Holy shit. And, it, and we're so back. We're so back, dude. He smashed that battle face. Never mind. Never mind. Never. Didn't have it. 
Never didn't have it. Brain control was the next card. Always, always rewarded. Always reward. Never punished. Never punished. Never punished. Never punished. Oh my god. He said, I'm gonna take that treeborn. Bro forgot all about lethal. <laughs> Fucking heart of the cards bullshit right there. That's crazy. Skill diff, just draw the brain control. So insane, man. Imagine getting saved after that. Punt of the century, dude. He simply knew because it was on top. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I'd be so mad. I'm honestly, you can't be mad because you were given a chance from God. God like shined down upon you and he was like, he will punt, but <laughs> but <laughs> you have one chance. Oh, that was funny. That was fucking insane. <laughs> you can never get games like this with Snake Eye. Ironically, you can. I've I've played some of the best Yu-Gi-Oh I've played in years. Dragon Link versus Snake Eye. Theron says this is for a PS5. No, <laughs> but it is for some money, so it's like not for nothing. Hell yeah. That's hype. Big sideboard action. I think this is where things get tough for Diego. He needed to win round one. If he won round one, then, I mean, like, all you need to do is, like, get one of the next two, right? And it's not too, too bad. But losing round one and then you have to fight through two games of sideboard hate is like, as a frog deck, it's like, hate that shit. All right. Set monster pass. No tree born. Brutal. However, this is better into, like, I don't know, fucking normal summon Fossil Dino. We saw him have Fossil Dino earlier on stream, so. Retro Chaz says, I love when frogs lose because they act like they're supposed to auto-win every matchup. The frogs act like that? The frog Yu-Gi-Oh cards act like they're supposed to auto-win. How do the frog Yu-Gi-Oh cards act that way? I don't I don't understand what you mean. Are you talking about the frog players? Are we talking about like the frog Yu-Gi-Oh cards? I don't <laughs> The frogs definitely think too highly of them. Look at Substitute's face, he's smug as fuck. You talk to the dual spirits, bro? Oh, based. Truly based. Okay, here's Normal Summon, Chain Deck Dev. That's a pretty fucking good Deck Dev. If Diego has DD Crow, he has an opportunity here. Pretty good one, actually. Yeah, Diego's probably thinking on the Crow Chain. What's happening here? Is there a disconnect? Should have done that after the ad in case of Water Hero. Disagree, Boggs. Actually, he should definitely change it to Stratos. Why? Because if the set monster is Dupe Frog and it's destroyed Chain Link 2 or higher, then it won't get to search him as Swap Frog and get his engine online. There you go. That's the reason you chain it to the search. And you don't really care about the Water Hero. Oh, it's me. It's fucking me who's disconnected. That's lovely. During the fucking finals. Fuck dueling book. Wow. He hit one card and it was a treeborn frog. Bruh. Bruh. He hit one card and it was a treeborn. Acting. 
some type of way. Holy shit, the hero beatdown is real. He just said, all right, I got seven cards and you got four. Dupe Frog in particular has a weird attitude. Brain control, is that going to save you this game? I don't know if it's going to save you this game, brother. I don't know if it's going to go the way you want it to. Nice deck dev, LeMayo. I never side deck dev versus frogs. I know a lot of people who side it just as a way to like blank soul exchange, but mama didn't raise no bitch, all right? I ain't no scared of no dupe lock, and I ain't scared of fucking soul exchange. Deck dev in general is just a fucking... Is a weak man's card. I'll say it. Oh my gosh, this snipe. Miracle? Bruh. Bruh. Oh my god. His deck dev was just a straight up minus two. <laughs> and look at my opponent's nut draw. <laughs> like, holy shit. That's fucking wild. I mean, if there's no gores, there's gotta be a game shot here, right? Never mind. <laughs> Guess not. You said Prohibition, call Swap Frog and watch them fall apart. Better yet, call Treeborn Frog. Because Swap Frog doesn't really do anything without Treeborn Frog. Alright. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What's happening here, bro? Damon really thinking, damn, did I just deck dev for zero? <laughs> okay, question. Question for the chat. We're going to hit you with a question. I'm actually going to do... All right, this is the question. Is deck dev gambling? One, yes, two, no. I need to know. Is deck dev gambling? Would you consider deck dev gambling? Oh, pretty mixed. Pretty mixed response. A lot of people saying it's not gambling. A lot of people saying it's not gambling. Interesting. Ninja Deer says, isn't card counting gambling? What do you mean by card counting? Finite says, depending on matchup. It's gambling versus frogs, but free one versus fairies. Isn't it also gambling versus fairies because then they just drop Christy and you lose? Am I missing something? Game one, yes. Game two and three, no. Interesting. Okay. We've got the dank armed dragon. Forced to dank armed just to stay alive. Knowledge. Is knowing that he has a miracle fusion helping here? You say it's investing? <laughs> Activating deck dev is investing. In this case, he's investing in the next game. He's investing in a game three. <laughs> this is going to be hype. Holy shit. Is summoning a monster while your opponent has a back row gambling? Mm, depends on the circumstance. Sometimes, yes. PvP is speculation. Speculation on what? <laughs> All right, there goes Stratos. He's gone. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stratos is gone. Back row is TT? No. Would have got used. TT would have got used. It's Mirror Force. Oh my fucking god. Please let it be Mirror Force. Please. Please let it be Mirror Force. One time. I want to see this. I want to see a Dark Armor with two Darks and Grave get Mirror Forced. I think that, that'd be the funniest fucking shit. That'd be so fucking funny. No. Okay. Never mind. Damn. That would be that would have been funny. You shouldn't side in Mirror Force versus Vayu Turbo, by the way. Except it does out Dinah, so maybe you should. But who fucking knows, man? Alright. What have we got here, chat? What have we got here? He knows what the back row is. 
Oh, he does know what the back row is. Still should have been Mirror Force. Keck. Why did he not attack with the Greffer? He might know about a Gorge. So there might be a circumstance where he could Phoenix Wing the Dad and then drop Gorge. Phoenix Wing Pitch Miracle in the draw phase. Bring out Treeborn. Okay, let him cook. What's he what's he working with here? Has he got a Caius? Definitely has Gorge. Well we de he definitely has Gorge. He has another miracle here. Okay. Well now what? Banishes the Stratos, banishes the Treeborn. Losing the Treeborn does suck. That is that is definitely going to complicate this grind game. Attack the Greffer. You shouldn't Necro here. Because you're going to lose the Greffer no matter what, so you might as well save the Necro. Why not Miracle twice for game? Necro Gardena. And he doesn't have another hero or water. He only has two materials, so once he banishes the first two, he can't. Yeah. Yeah, this is smart, not necroing here. Good decision. We know he's drawn a back row. Here comes the trade. Doesn't have to banish any of the darks. What he should have done, actually, because return is not gone yet, he should have banished the Grever to set up for a better return. The Caius Wincon is there. I guess maybe he wanted to deal 300. He factored 300 is better than like a stronger return. But I think one of the only ways you're coming back into this game, if you're him, is uh, return. Kaius for game? Bro, swap frog attack for game. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> How about just attack with swap frog, GG. And we know he has gores. Like, this game is just going to be so hard for for Demon now that Dark Armed is gone. And he's out of Kaius, I believe. Liftshoot says, I feel like people are listening to Keegan's broadcast for advice on their plays. Well, they shouldn't because I'm trash. <laughs> like, literally, like, I say the wrong play half the time. So if they're listening, then they shouldn't be. Um, that's I think that's the punish, is that I will say crazy shit sometimes. Like, he doesn't have gores. He doesn't have it. Attack, 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 attack. You know what I mean? Like, I just be saying crazy shit. Sometimes I'll be talking about, like, fucking farmer's markets. Um, you always feel like people are listening. Oh, no, that's... Dinah at this point is pretty good, though. Yeah, Dinah would clutch it. Dinah would clutch. He's going to send Plague. All right. That lets him go Goyo if he needs to. He can start pressuring with Armageddon now, because he can always make Goyo main, too, um, to prevent, like, Gore's shenanigans, but... You kind of have to start doing something, right? I think that's the issue, is, like... Something needs to happen. Run into Gorge, please. I need some fucking action. A lot of you guys didn't think Deck Dev was gambling. That's crazy. Alright. He's making Plague main one to get maximum damage. Interesting. Larry says, Keegan, thanks for hosting these, bro. Helps out while I have Sunday breakfast. Stay safe. Enjoy the EDM at the farmer's market. Hey, much appreciated, Larry. You're a G. Hope you're doing well, bro. Anything with a card is gambling. Based. Finally. Someone says it. Someone get this man his crown that he dropped. Actually true. Oh, okay, it's Jover. It's Jover. It's Jover. We're going next. All right. Hallmark gift cards are gambling. Facts. Facts. By the dip. All right, game three. That was an embarrassingly bad deck devastation virus. <laughs> I feel like Demon just had to play that game down two cards for no reason going second. Credit cards are gambling. Facts. You're gambling that you'll be able to pay it off. Should have necroed. Uh, he loses either way because he just banishes the... 
portfolio and attacks for game <laughs> if he doesn't have necro it's so jovert frog versus Vayu. yes frog versus Vayu in the finals charles all right we're moving into game three i'm liking what i'm seeing from both players but who you got has it changed has it changed what is the what are the thoughts here what are your thoughts Diego Believer is going strong. Dude, yeah, a lot of people are Diego Believers right now. Myself? I don't know. I saw I saw Damon fossil dying at the shit out of Raunuk. So I'm thinking, like, fossil dying could be pretty good. Deck dev for one again. It was deck dev for zero. The Treeborn came back. It was so bad. Tim says, tough game three for frogs. Not if your opponent keeps citing deck dev. Diego is your tiebreaker. So you finish top 16 if he wins. Giga Chad. And you're cheering against that for some reason. <laughs> Oppression and deck dev are big here for value. Maybe. Diego's been putting in the work he needs to clutch it. Also, maybe. It seems like no one can, no one can truly understand. No one can truly understand what is happening here. I myself have seen the future, and I know who is winning the finals. I know who's winning. All right, chat, get your last minute votes in. Smash like on the stream. We're moving into the finals of the first RBT of the season. We got. Fight Turbo versus Hero Frogs. But I know deep down who's winning this one. And I'll only tell you after the game is over. <laughs> and I'll say I was right. And I will be right. No matter no matter uh, no matter what. I know the answer. But I can't tell you until after the game's over. Armageddon Knight. Send Armageddon Knight. Infinite combo. Infinite power. Let's go frogs. It's not a phrase you hear every day. <laughs> you think frogs or Vyre are going to win? Well, whoever said there wasn't going to be a turn one trap dash shoot? Whoever said that? Do you see this? Do you see this in front of us right now? Cabo hates both of these decks. Eh, it's all right. Just wait for the fucking, just wait for the Valhalla video. It's coming this week. If you dislike these decks, then the Valhalla video is coming. All right. Damon wins with Gorge. Does he now? He's going to take Dupe Frog. What? What is going on? Is there another disconnect? There might be a disconnect here. There might be a disconnect, folks. We might be experiencing one of the saddest moments in all of history. Diego's internet. Is he okay? I hope he's all right. Cause he's not like disconnecting. So I hope it's not like a serious thing. All right, we'll give him a second. Dang, what's happening? Snack time. I'm so hungry. Trap to shoot shuffle Diego's internet into the deck. Dueling book servers suck. Yep. Facts. Fazuni says, why do you predict Vayu to do terrible before every RBET, but it's always in the finals? It's One, it's not always in the finals. And two, because I think the deck is violently mid. 
but nobody plays anything else good. What's going on? Back. Was there an emergency? Lagging? Okay, he's back. He's back, he's back, he's back, he's back. Okay. Server issue, server issue, corrected. No big deal. Had to take in that trap dust you during the final round, final match. But Hero Frog is a good deck. I also don't think Hero Frog is a good deck. <laughs> I'm crazy like that, but I don't think either of these decks are good. I think Black Wings is good. I think Dragons is good. And I think Fairies is good. Those are the decks I think are good. I think both of these decks are like mid tier. Frogs is too clunky and gets hated by sideboard shit. And um, Vayu Turbo is like just dirt slow. Takes forever to win a game. Is this the finals or semifinals? Uh, finals. This is the finals. It says it on the screen. What? You're smoking rock saying fairy is better than either of these. No, I'm just good at the game. It's okay. Someday, some, someday people will understand. Sam Scott says, yet it's always in top eights and is in the finals a lot. Yeah, because a lot of people play it. Just call myself trash earlier. Yeah, to get people to stop listening to me to copy my plays. I know I know how this game works. I played it last fuck ton, man. You, you can watch any one of my videos if you want to question my skill. Who is actually the one coping? Well, he don't listen to me. I'm bad at the game three, Yu-Gi-Oh. Hey, man, don't listen to me. If you don't, if you don't agree with me, that's totally fair. Keegan says he's good, but he's never won an RBT. Oh, true, true Dante. Kappa. He's out here. Bayou has the best side options and abuses oppression. That's his strength. That is the strength of it. Out of a 200 person tournament, two to three fairy players entered and 30 to 40 Bayou Turbo players entered. Facts. That is also facts. Yeah, representation is a big factor. People don't realize it. But if a lot of people are playing a deck, then it's going to populate more of the top eights. Matias says, it's so ironic the biggest Edison creator knows so little about the Edison meta. I know the, bro, I have this, what do you mean know so little about it? That's bait. That's fucking bait. <laughs> I obviously know about it. I obviously know how much a deck is played. Meta is just how much a deck is played. Whether or not it's good is up for debate. That's super bait. If Keegan is so good, why is there not a Keegan 2? Facts. Facts. Patricus says, I don't mind playing against Vayu. I don't mind it being overrated. I agree. I think Vayu is a pretty easy matchup. Sam Scott says, people don't play fairies because it's clearly A tier. Beneath the two S tier decks, which are chilling in the finals. <laughs> hilarious. Oh, man. Literally data for days on competitive stats in Edison after running some of the biggest tournaments for the formats. I know, right? Meta equals most effective tactic available. Did you just make that up? Or did you have chat GPT do it for you, crippled thumbs? <laughs> How do you join these Edison events? You have Sunday and Monday off from work. Any events then? Uh, usually they start on Saturday, unfortunately, explosive. But if you want to play in like uh, eight minutes that happen daily, you can... Join the really big Yu-Gi-Oh! Discord in the description below. And we fire him daily. I think Danny makes a good point. That is what Meta actually stands for. I thought it stood for Facebook, Sonny. <laughs> Frogs are so back. He's kind of cooking. I mean... A little bit. He's down a card, but he has an absolute zero on play, which is okay, I guess. Three hundred seventy-two viewers like the vid. Oh my god! Everybody watching right now, everybody out here for the finals, make sure and smash like so we can run more of these bad boys. Make Edison toxic always based. <laughs> That's a backronym. 
the funny. <laughs> Here's an interesting tournament idea. A tournament where you have X slots for each top deck and let people sign up for the slots. It would be interesting to see what deck wins out and how they top. That is a very interesting idea, Miguel. I think if we had equal representation of all decks, it would be really interesting. I would, I would like to see that. Because I think some decks do better into open fields. All right, Vayu's gonna activate here. So he can make Armor Master, Crash, Stardust, negate the absolute zero. So he's kind of cooking. Oh, he's got Brain Control, so that's just game. GG's, well played. Vayu Turbo takes it. Vayu Turbo tier zero? Kappa? <laughs> oh my god. It's Jover. Vayu Turbo haters in the chat, seething, myself included. Good games. Good games to both players. That was a lot of fun. I think that was a great top eight. I think everyone played really well. Um, you know, a few misplays here and there. But uh good shit. He says, but we are coping to think Vayu Turbo is best. Like you are, you are coping. It's okay. It's okay, Sam. It's okay, buddy. Vayu Turbo Doubters BTFO. Vayu Turbo more like Vayu Based. <laughs> Never punished. Dad Burial Brain Con dot deck. Facts. Facts. Low key. Just draw Brain Control and auto win. He did have turn one dust shoot into Oppression for the Substitute into the Brain Control Steel. You know, that's pretty fair, but Brain Control is a good card and Vayu Turbo plays Brain Control. No other deck plays Brain Control, by the way. Just Vayu Turbo. <laughs> Damon beat you in Swish and won it all. Very nice. No, he did well. Average Vayu Turbo Chad Hand. That was a good game. That was a good set. Congratulations to all these players. Uh, and huge thank you to all the judges who helped put this on. At least I never put money on your Yu-Gi-Oh predictions. I literally do, and I always win. <laughs> what the fuck? I bet on Pro Storm winning with fairies. And I won. That's how you know. When a player is good and plays a good deck like Fairies. Fairies best deck. Thanks again for running these tournaments. You're the go. I disagree with you, but you do more of the format than I do. And I still respect you. I respect you too, Sam. Thank you for chatting. Thank you for hanging out. I am Nerd says, that was insane. Great tournament. I agree too. This tournament could have gone a lot of different ways. There was a lot of cool stuff that could have happened. But... Uh, that was finals. That was it. Um, it's not doubly limb, so finals is just one thing. Much love, Sam. Hope you're doing well. Hope everyone in the chat is doing well and had a great Sunday and enjoyed this event and enjoyed the enjoyed the stuff. If he had Gorse, he would have won from that position. Cope. Um, yeah, if he had Gorse, he would have won. That is true. But he didn't have Gorse. So uh skill issue. Skill issue! Skill issue, maybe you should have drawn Gores next time. You ever consider that next time you get OTK'd? Maybe you should have drawn Gores. Misplay. Misplay, hello. Misplay. Jared says, top eight deck list, let's go. I'll, I'll get him out tomorrow. Top eight deck list will come tomorrow. And um, I'll get you that ninth place Galaxia deck list. I know everybody's, everybody's itching for that. Everybody's itching for that one. That one is based. Um, Roundhook's deck list also looked based, so. We'll be getting you guys the deck lists here in the next 24 hours. Um, you feel like that's blatantly oppression? Hey, dog. Hey, dog. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not here to judge anybody's plays in a high-stakes situation. Clearly, we're not the ones in the finals, Mr. I Am Nerd Podcast. What happened to you? I heard you played against Galaxia. Was that a tough matchup? <laughs> Did he Christia you, bro? <laughs> Is that what happened? <laughs> Nonetheless, great game. Yeah, it was a great game. You lost to OG. You also lost to Galaxia, didn't you? Correct me if I'm wrong. If you make top deck for Vayu... First, post a screen with brain control, oppression, dust shoot. Only those three cards. What? Anyway, congratulations to all the players who earned their invites. I'm going to end stream. I'm exhausted. I was up all night trying to fix the fucking stupid bracket. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. 
smash like, smash subscribe. Much love. See you guys in the end, uh, in the 